You're now about to go deep with Dan Good. Jacob, what's going on, man? Man, I'm just pumped to be here. Number yeah. one podcast ever. Oh, this wow. Sweet Jesus, studio. throwing it out there early. <laughs> yeah, the praise sure. starts. Where are we going from here? I do not know. Uh, be gentle. Be yes, gentle. I will. I will. I promise. I know it's your first time. Yeah. <laughs> we'll pop your podcast, Cherry. <laughs> Good Lord. Good Lord. Yeah. Well, no, man, we got the set up in here today. Yeah. We got Chris on the camera. It's yeah, all man. go. It's funny. Two podcasts in a row that he's oh. known the guest and yeah. um, I didn't oh. tell him the name beforehand. He and get, <laughs> gets around old Chris. Yeah, I reckon, <laughs> hey, I'm just starting to wonder this. Maybe I should go to you for guest list, mate. Yeah. <laughs> he's not in the room, so I can't exactly talk to him right now. But oh, that's all right. Yeah. yeah. What's been happening, man? Um, Not much, man. I've been busy. Uh, been doing night shoots all week down at uh, Village Roadshow. Yeah. It's rough. Oh. It's great, but it's rough. <laughs> yeah, it's good fun, but yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> it takes a toll on the body. It's, uh, yeah, man, I'm, I'm pumped. We've been doing some stunt work on there, a bit of fight choreo, a little bit of acting, which has been, yep. which has been good. That's what we're there yeah. for. Yeah. Get the face out there. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Get my Oscar winning moments. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all going well? Yeah, man. Oh, it's been so good. Like I was only, uh, only got graded early 2020. Oh, sorry, late 2020. Yeah. COVID kind of pushed everything back. So last year I had my first stunt sort of professional stunt gig, which is good on a, a film called Black Side. It should be out sometime this year and uh, on Netflix. And then yep. this is stunt gig number two. So oh, work it. I'm pretty pumped. Starting yeah. the year off well. Yeah. yeah. So Great. what, um, so what, what's the, what's sort of involved for you in the, in the stunt work? Have you got something that you actually specialize in or you're just doing the general stunt work? You've been a guy that they <laughs> kick yeah. shit out of? Yeah, or? Just taking a few wrecks and hits. <laughs> yeah. uh, you kind of, you specialize you do specialize. Everyone sort of has their thing. And I think yeah. generally when people come into the industry from into stunts, they do come from a, a specialization, yeah. whether um, like a, one of the guys, Dan, he's a, a pro motocross athlete. So like he, he can do generally everything, but he is one of the guys like Max is coming up, Mad Max too. He'll be one of the dudes for yeah, sure. Yeah, that yeah. gets the call to do a bunch of bike stuff. Yeah. You know, everyone has their things. Mine being Bex army, it's, it's military stuff. Yeah. So weapons handling. And, Which is a great, um, realm yeah. to be in, isn't yeah. it really? I mean, it is, it is, but at the same time, it is it's sort of pigeonhole because a lot of, a lot of films are not really using as much military weapons and stuff like, yeah. cause stunts is anything like technically if you're riding a bike on set, it's, it's a stunt. It's a stunt. Yeah. 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 So Anything that, a, an amount of danger to it yeah. and could be insurance getting yeah, involved. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, a stunt. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> Five stunties on call, ready to go. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we had, uh, there's a, a bunch of extras on set last night. And I, uh, one of the guys, Stevie, one of the um, assistant cohorts is walking around. He's like, they're getting into it because we've got some stunt guys doing some fights and stuff. And the extras are starting. And he's like, whoa, guys. Don't swing anything. <laughs> You're not covered by insurance. If someone gets hurt, it's a big issue. Just, just chill. So it's, um, they were the extras or the yeah, Sunday's yeah, practice. The oh, extras. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, you get Which, a, getting a little bored. You're sitting around for 10 plus 12 yeah, hours. Yeah. You start to entertain yourself. Yeah. 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 And it, like everyone wants to do a good job and get involved and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. But it, yeah, it comes down, I think, uh, mostly just, just the safety stuff. Like if we get hit, yeah. we're kind of expected to to take hits every now and then. Of course. You know, yeah. But extras aren't expected to cop a, a punch in the face. No. Now and then, so. It happens. It happens as an actor sometimes too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've been in that. I got a got hit with a butt of a of a Glock one oh, time. Oh nice. Yeah, it was it was it was unnecessary, but it was, <laughs> it was you know, it was in the moment, so we kept going yeah. with it. We were like fidgeting trying to take the gun off each other. Like I yeah, think he yeah. disarmed me and I sort of tried to get it back yeah. off him and copped it straight. Oh, right man. in the butt of the nose. Eh? Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, it was funny because the take like we'd already got the shot yeah, we were just yeah. doing an extra one for fun oh, like, for to see what would happen and then yeah. that's what happened so, oh man <laughs> yeah that's good where did it hit you um i think it i think it hit me right in the nose oh, eh? like in the, the yeah yeah so yeah there was yeah. a bit of blood but <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was okay it was yeah. fine oh man you there cop- was no insurance on that one that was no. uh, pretty <laughs> pretty much an indie, <laughs> indie yeah set. man oh you cop some hits uh i mean uh chris bridgewater did a film last year a boxing film and man yeah. Doing the, the a lot of the boxing stuff, a lot of it was just sparring. Like we just went, you know, we'll do away with trying to really choreograph everything specifically, and we'll get footage of just bouncing around the ring and just actually just sparring, really like and filling time. each other out. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we'll get specific vignettes that we can cut into the sequence, yeah. the fight sequence. But the whole thing was done on like it's a black and white film. And it was done under strobe lights. Oh, okay. So when it come down to like timing and judging distance, you're like his hands here, and then it's in your face. Like, oh god damn! Oh, you're <laughs> just getting some real life reactions yeah, out yeah, of it. Yeah, for sure. There was uh, there was one where I had to uh, my character had to fire an uppercut at him, and he was supposed to 
pull back out of the way. Yeah. But and we've been <laughs> well, no, no. We were we were running it. We run a few takes. It was good. And uh just due to the the way it was, the cinematographer had to um sorry, the DOP had to call it. He was calling it because the director was out of the room watching playback. Yeah. And he was calling it and all day he was like, three, two, one, action. Three, two, one, action. And we're firing away. And I've got this cocked, <laughs> like ready to roll. And then he changes on that take and goes, and three, two, one, and action. And I just heard that and and, and, and you just went. It. And yeah. Chris heard and it didn't move. And just <laughs> copped it square in the face. Oh no. Oh god, it was, yeah, it's a bit of blood. It was it was a good laugh. We, yeah. Uh, we walked out with some bruises. <laughs> it happens. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, it's it's creating a bit of um bit of a hard shooting landscape, isn't it? Yeah, when you're doing yeah. black and white and yeah. uh, you're throwing wild oh, swings man. as well. Cause that's the thing with obviously film it, as you know, clearly with it being a stunty that yeah. uh, kind of wild swings that are good for the camera, <laughs> but might not actually be the normal fight style that you would be street fighting with or yeah. anything. And yeah, so it, uh, and you got to react and yeah, all yeah. those sorts of things. And it's, um, yeah, it's a bit of a, bit of a thing to get timing down. Right. Oh, for sure. The, yeah. The reactions, uh, Good, yeah, because yeah, that's what they, like. I've heard like a lot of stunt guys. They're like, oh, maybe we'd, we'd rather you know get someone that's not actually a trained like fighter for this mm. role because they're just gonna. It's too hard to untrain the mind out of the way they're mm. swinging and to get it to look good on camera and everything yeah. like that as well. It's a it's a bit of a thing. It's like something you wouldn't think about until you're like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's one of the good things when you do like your stunt training stuff. So one of the things you need to do to get to sign off and get graded is you need to do 12 months under a, a stunt coordinator. Yeah. So you do a lot of fight choreography training and that where you're learning to really throw your punches out wide and, and sell it rather than what would realistically happen in a fight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's so cool, man. So that's speaking of that film, uh, Canvas, right? Canvas, yeah. 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 So that was a feature film? Yes. Is yeah, that yeah. your sort of debut sort of indie feature? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was my uh, my first lead in a feature. So yeah, that's it was, awesome, man. Yeah, it was pretty exciting. So pretty what's exciting. A, tell us a little bit about the film and like your character and everything. Uh, so my character, his name is Tobias. He's um, he's a, a soldier, so not not a big yeah. stretch there. <laughs> yeah. But uh, he kind of, he's got out of the military in the wake of his, um, his brother's suicide and given all that he's experienced you know, on deployments and whatnot and that as well. He's basically just gone like just really reclusive, really into himself and he's he's basically not talking, doesn't speak to anyone, doesn't utter words at all. So I think like the first scene of speaking was like page 92 or something in the oh, script. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So for me, like it was great not having to learn so many lines, but it, <laughs> yeah. was, it was all nonverbal for like the – which is really hard to play. Well, you know, like yeah. that, that emotionality without actually, you know, yeah. the physicality of the emotion and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, especially when you've got the other actor delivers a line and you feel like naturally, like we, you want to say you, something. You want to say yeah, something. Yeah. And you're like, oh, no, I can't. I got to stay silent. But yeah. yeah. It was, man, it was awesome. It was so much fun. Like the grass was great. It was a solid three weeks of shooting. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. It's yeah. great. And so, What's the, so the film is um, really solely all about boxing then, or is it goes through the turmoil of everything that the character's facing yeah. and losing his brother? And is it like some sort of art piece towards like the fighting as an analogy, uh, sort of overall, metaphorically, or anything? Yes, uh, yes, and no. I suppose I suppose it does it does come out as a an outlet, you yeah. know, for for his aggression and and all of that. So I think generally, like if you look at people when they're Super aggressive, it's generally coming from a place of hurt yeah, of, of some degree. You know, whether they're aware of it or not, there's, there's yeah. pain that they're, they're, they're funneling and they're pushing on to someone else. Yeah. So a lot of that, the fighting coming out, the way he is in the ring, it's just, it's animalistic. It's not, you know, really pretty boxing. It's just a just a beast. Yeah. It's just there to hurt, to, to inflict pain on other people. Yeah. And, and kind That's of we're dealing with yeah, it. Yeah. Getting his own pain out. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's cool. And I know, um, so what role did Kylie Riddle play? Is that, uh, I don't know so she was well, one yeah. of the, yeah, so she was um, she's sort of the antagonist okay. to a degree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she she played um, a character who was sort of really close with my character. Yeah. But unbeknownst to me was sort of in, in her mind trying to help me but not helping me and doing dodgy stuff behind the background, which just yeah. ended up being like she just added feel she was like oxygen to the flame yeah just fanning it and just and making it bigger and bigger it's like a boil over point yeah 
Yeah. And she was great. Like she was amazing. Yeah, she's really good. Yeah. yeah. Like, I got a, we got along like a house on fire. Yeah, so it was awesome. good. We both got horribly dark senses of humor. <laughs> so it was good. Oh, really? It's really good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, no, that's interesting. I haven't quite seen that. I haven't worked, <laughs> I've worked with her actually on one or two films. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think I think when you find uh I think everyone within the industry, it's obviously it's very um it's very left leaning. It's very it's also a lot softer being an artistic yeah. sort of form. Yeah. I think generally people who do have that that darker sense of humor kind of keep it bottled up until they find someone and yeah. then they're like <sighs> Well, that's the, that's the best part about like when, I know when I got into the, the acting game and everything is that um, when you find that you find those people eh? and it's just mm. like and you're like oh I can be myself I can yeah, say yeah. really crazy shit right now and oh, someone else just gonna feed off it absolutely. and play along yeah. and it just goes you just hope wherever you're not it goes up. yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which happens yeah. <laughs> So yeah. people are understanding that they've heard yeah. it all before and you forget sometimes like yeah, you just yeah. see the soundy giggling in the corner and cause he's been recording or <laughs> listening the whole time and just like, <laughs> it's like oh no, oh, you man. heard all that? No, I hope they haven't heard some of my conversations. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's good. It is really good when you find people like that in film. Yeah, no, sure. that, that's right. Yeah. And, um, so for you, obviously, did you, did you have any like aspirations of getting in the film game or anything like that, or is it an outlet for you after the after the army? And um, how, did, how did it sort of come about? You know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah it's a man. It's a different path. Um, it's it's been something I've always wanted to do. Like as long as I can remember, I've always wanted to be an actor and, and be in film. I love film. Yeah, like that's that's sort of the the one thing me and my dad have, which is really great, is film. He, yeah, he loves it. So he's number one supporter sometimes. Yeah. To an awkward level, but, <laughs> but, you know, hanging out on set. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a proud dad, you know. Yeah, it's yeah, great. that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So I've always wanted to do it, but it was sort of kind of like I did my, my high school musical. You know, I, I wasn't I wasn't big into theatre at school. You know, it was it was back in the nineties. Yeah, you know, early two thousands. I was, I was a homophobic teen. I was wasn't, like, it wasn't as widely accepted. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was like, oh, I want to be the theater kid. That's super gay. But yeah. now I'm, like, I'm like, man, who cares? Like, get yeah. shit. Yeah, Just go after thing, it. Yeah. yeah, but um, so I did my high school musical. I loved it. And then life took a different path. You know, I, I looked at it and I kind of, I thought, how am I going to bring anything to acting roles if I haven't really got any life experience? Like I'm yeah. coming straight out of high school. What do I know? Yeah. And, uh, the other thing that I'd always wanted to do was, um, was be a soldier. So I, I went, you know what, I'm going to give that a crack. So I joined the army and I went away six years, uh, as an infantry soldier. And then once I kind of got out, I was unsure what to do. Um, uh, I picked up a job in the mines. I was unhappy there. And then the thing that kind of led me to actually giving it a crack was, um, this guy called Mark Donaldson won a uh, Victoria Cross in, I, th I think it was 2009, 2010 over in Afghanistan. And he wrote a book called The Crossroad, which was his life story leading up to the crossroads in the contact that he won a Victoria Cross for. It's yeah. incredible, incredible story. I keep, uh, the things he went through, man, it's just next level. But I remember reading that and I love the book and he's a, he's a hero of mine. I met him once and it was a great experience. But um I remember reading, I saw a Facebook article, I think it was, and Mel Gibson's production company, Icon, had bought the rights to the Crossroads. Okay. And that's what kind of re-sparked it. I was sitting in the mines on a, a lunch break and read that. And I was like, oh, man, like an Australian war story. Like if we, if we do this from a war I've been involved in, like I could be an extra. Like I don't care. I'll be a dead body. I don't care. Yeah. Like yeah. this is something they might actually need soldiers for this. Like I could do it. I yeah. could do it. And it kind of got me thinking. I was like, man, I always wanted to do acting. Why? Why give it a crack? You know what I mean? Like life, life is short, dude. Like yeah, I couldn't. I get to a point where I, I couldn't fathom the idea of working Monday to Friday in some dead end job that I don't enjoy to be too tired to do anything and catch up on errands on Saturday and then Sunday have a little bit of time to relax and maybe do stuff that I enjoy doing if I've got enough money to do it, yeah, you know, try. and then start it again. Like, <laughs> yeah. What, what kind of life is that, man? So I just, I looked at it and I was like, well, I mean, the only thing really stopped me doing film and acting is, is me. Yeah. As yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what do I do? So I just Googled talent agency Brisbane and <laughs> sort of started from there. Yeah. 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 And so you're saying you're on a mine site? Is that yeah, yeah. Yeah. I worked in the mines. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that was, um, that was after your deployment. Is that right? Or? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I, uh, I joined the army, uh, the 29th of June, 2009. And then by mid 
sorry, late September, early October, I was on a plane to, to Afghanistan. And then we, we got back in sort of June, July, 2011. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's a different, it's a different place, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's a different experience for sure. But one that I'll hold dear forever, you know, it's, even for all the, the negatives of it, I mean, having gone, it, it's something that you can, you can hold really special in the fact that only, you know, a select few have experienced it. So for those people that were with you during those times and, and even guys who weren't with you specifically, but you know, we've all been, yeah, it's, it's a special thing that you can kind of have with those individuals. Yeah. For sure. So a bond connection. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, um, you can kind of, I suppose, akin to people of like summit at Everest. You know, man, there's only a small handful of people. So just just the fact that I got there and as simple as just seeing the view, there's only a handful of people who have experienced sitting at the top of that mountain and looking out and seeing everything. And truly understand it from the same yeah. point of view and have experienced it. Yeah. yeah. At different times, obviously, and and quite possibly different climates yeah. of where when they depending on when they were deployed. But yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And even even the landscape, man, like it's 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 a part of the world that other than the people who live there and, you know, the, the people that are deployed, like it, you're probably never going to see it. Yeah. You're probably never no, going to go over there and, and see that so, landscape, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So even just on that level, it's special. Yeah. Just like rough desert sort of. Yeah. Trip. And, and like, well, I mean, I, I guess I've seen it's it in um, movies and things yeah, like that, yeah. whether it was actually Afghanistan that they were shooting <laughs> it or <laughs> not or something close. Not. Yeah. No, um, yeah. So. It's, it's pretty brutal. And they, sort of from what you can see in some of the movies or you've read mm. like stuff like obviously they fight in those conditions, they live yeah. there, they know it. And yeah. that's sort of the advantage that they have over other forces coming in. Right. But the forces yeah. that are coming in are probably heavily like yeah. um, oh, the, the trained in, in artillery and everything yeah. more than what they do, but they use whatever to their advantage. Right. And that's the detected killer warfare yeah, right? Yeah. Like, of the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the, the technological advantage that we as the Western world have over them was like, <laughs> ridiculous man like it, out of control like it, their training and stuff is is not anywhere near the level but you're fighting an ideological war yeah. you know you're not fighting you know just for territory that they're, they're fighting in what they believe in and they believe in it a lot more than what we do yeah. so like you, we're never never going to win that yeah you know i just you kind of just take solace in the fact that for the, you know, 20 years that we were there, some of the people had a better life for that period. And now that we're gone, it's back to what it was before we were. Yeah, it's, it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty <laughs> it's, crazy. It's hey, pretty disheartening, like but the millions or billions that were spent like by a mm, lot of different countries trillions, of, yeah, trillions. and lives and everything mm. that's gone on. Um, I'm sure they got a lot of people out though, right? Or helped yeah, a lot of people. But yeah, some, some, I think the, uh, the overall pull out, like I'm not, I'm not an expert on it, but I think it was fairly poorly executed. It was, yeah, uh, from what I understand, yeah. yeah I, think, I think the global stage is aware that it was yeah rushed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, and left them a lot of that artillery too that was set up to just really oppress the people even mm. more again. Yeah, I mean, look, they, they took a lot of things, you know, generators and, you know, comms equipment and stuff like that. Like the stuff there is it's going to be useless very, very quickly. And they're not trained on it either. So it's, yeah, they're going to wreck a lot of it just through ignorance and yeah. stupidity. Yeah. So, yeah. But, you know, who knows? Who knows what will happen? Maybe we'll have to go back in and get it all. Oh, God. Who, who knows? Yeah. Well, so, what, um, what, what was actually your role in the, in the military or no, why true. you were there? Yeah. Um, so, it, overall, I was an infantry soldier. Yeah. So, uh, by, by the time that I left, I was a corporal rank, so I had uh, seven guys sort of as a minimum below me. Yeah. And I was a, a heavy weapons specialist and instructor for that. Yeah, cool. But, uh, my, my specific role while I was overseas was basically providing security for our high-value targets. So when we deployed, we had like our entire infantry battalion basically went apart from, you know, some maybe 30 or so, whatever was left. So we took maybe anywhere from five to 700 guys give or take, and then they were broken into combat teams that were in the different valleys in our area of operations, which is always Gan province. And then outside of those, 
uh, they took like one section of like eight dudes from each of the combat teams and brought them together to create a platoon with um, some cavalry guys, some engineers who are fuck, the engineers, man. You can't speak more highly of them. Yeah. Like they, man, they keep so many people safe. <laughs> it's, yeah. yeah. It's, we, we give them shit. For you know, any, anyone who's not infantry will give shit for not yeah. being not being infantry. But <laughs> yeah. that's sort of the uh, the general. Everyone gives everyone shit for not being whatever core they are. But yeah. like at the heart of it, the calf guys and, and the engineers, they're incredible. Like they do an incredible job. Yeah. And realistically, keeping you safe and keeping everything running. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we we came together and we formed a platoon that um, did a lot of. Not us specifically, but the people that we're looking after, like AusAid, like government officials, trying to do humanitarian aid yeah. type stuff. So they were like, we take doctors to the hospital and and try and make sure that the you know the, the lowest standard care that they have is sort of the best that they can get, and try and keep that yeah. to a, a relatively good standard. We're doing meetings with like the governor mm-hmm. of the province and trying to rebuild their their governance structure and, and try and set the place up so that when we left they would have some semblance of like an, an ability to run the country, yeah. in, you know, and, and keep the Taliban. And better than where it was yeah. before, yeah. Yeah, and no, that's probably all gone to shit now, yeah. but that was sort of our jobs, our security for them. So in terms of the deployment, um, we didn't really get any contacts, like no firefights. because the You didn't really no, get into, yeah, okay. no, which it's probably a good thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so no. But yeah. That's what yeah. you're trained for, I guess. So yeah. it's like it's it's one of the things you know you, you deploy. You want to. Yeah. That's, that's what you want. You want the action. Yeah. yeah. That's that's at the end of the day. That's why a lot of infantry soldiers leave. Like all the deployments are dried up. You're like, well, I'm not. Why do you want a forty team if all you're going to do is train? If you're never going to play a game, what's yeah, the point? yeah. You know? For that so, one day that you might be ready for it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you you want to see like it's it's a sort of I suppose most of us are the majority of alpha male types is in the infantry as well. So it's, it's sort of a, you want to see how you're going to react. You want to know what it's going to be like, what you're going to do. Are you, mm. are you going to freak out or are you going to, you know, come, come to the crunch and, yeah. and put the rounds down and win the day? Yeah. Cause so, you have an idea in your head of how you would react, yeah. but you don't know until yeah, you actually in that knows. scenario, right? Yeah, man. Until yeah. you hear that crack thump of the round go over your head, you, you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. That so, heart rate just starts to go mm. through the roof and you're like, oh shit, it's, yeah. it's go time. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, so you're, yeah, you're there a while and, and yeah. never really got to see the full on action then. I yeah. Mean, yeah. You were doing, you're doing yeah. what you were supposed to do then by yeah. the sounds of it, if like the high yeah. value targets weren't actually like getting into any conflict or anything. Yeah. 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 There were, uh, there were some, some hairy times we, yeah. you know, we kind of we thought things were really going to kick off and it just sort of. Yeah, it never eventuated. We had a lot of intel reports that the uh, the Taliban knew sort of who we were and they knew what our sort of goal was. So when you are fighting an, an ideological war, you know, they say, they say hearts and minds. You're there to win the hearts and minds of the people. And if they can undermine the security that we can provide for the people, that sort of wins theirs. They go, well, these guys can't provide anything for you. Yeah. Look at them. They can't keep you safe, you know. So they they sort of knew who we were and they were – actively targeting us but it just sort of two ships in the night just yeah never Plus, hit well, yeah, yeah yeah thank god for that yeah well yeah yes and no yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. it is what it is man yeah yeah so you got mixed feelings on your time there yeah yeah definitely yeah. like I, I don't regret anything and like if i could blink and go back i would like yeah. most of us would it's a it's a simpler life man when you when you're overseas things are they are they are very very simple you sort of yeah, you don't you don't really have your phones. I mean, they do nowadays. Back then, phones technology was less. You cut off from sort of the pettiness of the world. You know, I can remember having conversations with my girlfriend at the time, just complaining about stuff at home, and I was just like, "Oh my god, this is not a problem." Like, yeah. <laughs> what you were telling me is not, and like, how are you even? How does this enter your realm? Yeah, like it's you're so disconnected yeah. from the real world. Yeah, yeah. So life becomes really, really simple. Yeah, when you're over there, you know, you go out in the morning, you do your tasking and patrols for the day, you come back, you get orders for the next day, you go to the gym, come back, go to bed, and it all happens again the next day. Yeah, yeah. You know? A lot less uh, of cloud in the mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Less to focus on, less distractions. You know, very purposeful. You, f- you feel like you're really doing something. You're really contributing to, to greater society, w- whether you are or not. You know, a, a lot of people are going to disagree that and I'm not going to disagree with them that you know the, the countries went into there for for the wrong reasons. But 
on an individual level, salt just didn't. You know what I mean? Governments are going to do whatever governments want to do. Mm. You know, if it's oil or gems or whatever the hell they decide they want to go into a country and get, the people on the ground aren't going in there thinking of that same thing. You know, we're going in there with good intentions to, yeah. to help people and yeah, and protect what what do we what you can. Love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Well, we yeah. won't go too too, <laughs> far, too much further. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's, it's suddenly um, yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a blurry subject, isn't yeah. it? Um, the whole thing in itself. So it's a rabbit hole, man. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. Know, I did, there's enough podcasts out there discussing yeah, that. Yeah, for um, sure. No, no. I appreciate like you sharing. Yeah, yeah man. Some I'm, of your views and what yeah. happened over there. Yeah. I like, I like to be fairly open, but yeah, you know, you don't, you don't want to get too into it. No, so it must feel like another life, though, right? Yeah, man. Yeah, it, it's it's weird. It feels like yesterday, but it also feels like like it's nearly ten years ago. It is. It's over ten. It's eleven years ago now. Yeah, you know, it's yeah, it's a crazy feeling. Yeah, a lot of um, a lot can happen in ten years. Never alone yeah. something a scenario like that. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. So but, yeah, yeah. Well, so you come back. You sort yeah. of it was a hard to sort of come back and sort of you know yeah. come into normal oh, life, so to speak. Absolutely, you know, man. and yeah. adjust to everything like that. Yeah. Oh man, I, I still struggle now. It, I, I don't think it's. Um, I don't. I don't know if it's ever going to be a battle that we're, we're going to win. Mm. I think it's something that you, you're constantly going to struggle to fit back in. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of people. They don't fully understand that it's it's not it's not just a job, you know what I mean? Like it's not a nine to five. You might have days where you work seven or four, but you don't clock off. It's it's twenty four seven. You live and you breathe. Your mind's always uh, engaged in yeah, that. And I guess yeah. the moment it's not, then something bad can happen, right? Exactly. Yeah. And then all your friends, like especially when you join, a lot of the times you get moved away from where you joined up. You know, yeah. like I'm a Brizzy boy, Gold Coast boy. I got moved to Darwin. You know, so all of your support systems go on. So the support system you have is the people around you and all you do is hang out. Like you work with them Monday to Friday, you hang out with them all weekend. You go away for weeks and weeks of time, you holiday with them. All you do is talk military, you know? So when you do leave, you go back to that place that is now like a completely foreign land to you. Yeah. You know, all your friends have moved on or whatever. You've lost contact with people, but they also have absolutely no scope of relevance to what you've been experiencing, what you've been through. So there's like a huge social disconnect. You know, you come back and, and like being in those environments is a harsher as well. So like your the dark sense of humor, the, the, you yeah. know, the way that you are can be very, very abrasive, especially when you're coming back to, to normal people aren't used to being around that. And then you add to that stepping into like the film industry, which is very, very soft and, and very left wing. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, they, you feel like you're walking on eggshells a lot of the time just to make sure you don't get cancelled and, and piss people off. <laughs> yeah. <get canceled>. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, you got to be right up there to be in yeah, the firing yeah. line to be cancelled, yeah, don't true. you? But I yeah. know what you're saying because it's just like anyone can yeah. catch wind of something, yeah. a conversation, they'll be like, Shh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the whispers that go on and like things yeah. can get like mis uh, misconstrued in yeah. the situations and like you're just playing around and then yeah, all of man. a sudden it's like it's this huge thing. And it's like, but we're fine. Like yeah, it, it yeah. was just yeah, it's a, yeah, yeah. Exactly, man. Yeah. yeah. And it it's can just happen. People with different ideologies or people with different ways of being brought up or different yeah. ways of communicating. It's yep. just it's just a it's a thing that can get lost in translation, right? Yeah, man. So easily. So easily. So it's uh yeah, it's a big it's a big struggle to fit back into sort of normal society yeah. for sure, man. Did you find that it helped getting into the acting or was that is that um, was that the most left field thing that you could possibly was, do really from probably, that scenario, yeah, probably, right? probably really left field. Yeah. But it's been good. Like it's like being something that I've always wanted to do, it, it's been good to to be able to sort of explore. And it is, I think it's, it's genuinely helped me, I think, to uh, get more in touch with uh with emotions yeah. <laughs> to, be, to be fair yeah 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 yeah, yeah. So it's, it's something that you obviously need to tap into when you're yeah. acting yeah yeah for sure and you do like it's not that it's specifically trained you know they don't, they don't specifically train you in a course to suppress your emotions but when you're you're operating in a an environment where you have to think objectively you know especially as a commander, I, I may have to make a decision that is more likely going to get you killed, but it's going to save the rest of us. Yeah. 
I have to emotionally detach from it. I have yeah. to be able to go, I'm sorry, damn man. I, I need you to fucking run on that machine gun. Yeah. Dude, like we, we have to take that out or we're all fucked. You know, that, so you kind of just through the training and, and through the scenarios that you're going through, you suppress all your emotions yeah. and it, it, you don't really realize it at the time. It's something that I've kind of only sort of realized in the last few years of being out. I've only been out since 2015. So the last six, seven years is something that I've, I've learned that I'm like super emotionally repressed. Like, yeah. like, yeah, you don't, you don't feel shit. And people say something like, okay, cool. Now just like very stoic and just, yeah, sort of, yeah, yeah. And it's not a, you're not trying to be, it's just like, it gets to a point where you start completely just attaching emotion. Yeah. It was At least muscle, I did. Yeah. Muscle you haven't worked for yeah. a long time. Yeah. Yeah. So that's dormant there. Yeah. So when you did have to start working that, was it sort of felt like a more, it could be also a healing process, like going through and being an actor and, yeah. and, and having to tap into all these emotions and connecting with people on yeah. a whole nother level of things. Yeah. Yeah. It, it probably would have been sort of th- yeah, man. therapeutic or. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It, yeah. It's, it's something that's, it's definitely been therapeutic for me. It's definitely helped me a lot. And it, it sort of pointed out in ways, I don't want to say the ways that I was broken, but you know, way that I can improve as, as a human being really. Yeah. Yeah. It's try not to be so callous and, and rough around the edges all the time and sort of soften up a bit and, yeah. you know, which is, it's good. It's, it's never bad to be, to be softer. I mean, there's times to be a hard man, but there's, yeah. there's a lot more times I think in general life interacting with people that it's better to just be a soft guy. And just be, yeah. Be yeah. Nice. I mean, and, and that's the thing It's having the confidence to actually show that sort of part of yeah, you, right? Like it's, 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 a, it's uh, a thing that like as a male, you're like kind of early <laughs> yeah, on, especially 100%. back in the day, it was like, Oh, yeah. don't be a pussy, you yeah. know, or whatever. 100%. Like it's looked look down on, but I mean, that's just people with their own insecurities, like pushing that yeah. on other people. But because they're not so good with themselves, obviously. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a strong thing to show that emotion, right? And be confident in showing that emotion and showing yeah. that you're a real person. Um, yeah. Because everybody's feeling it, whether they want to do it or not. Yeah. I mean, you're a goddamn psychopath, serial <laughs> killer. If you if you don't have any emotion, right, or yeah. detached. I mean, sure, some people could have uh, yeah, some yeah. medical issues or yeah, whatever yeah, going sure. on. And uh, yeah, I'm not sort of poking fun at that or anything, but yeah. it's just the general standard of being a man is just like, yeah. oh, you shouldn't be crying or you shouldn't yeah, do this or show yeah. any kind of passion and emotion yeah. over it. It's, yeah. It's that, that old school mentality, mm. you know, which I think, I think this day and age, we, we need to move a little bit away from that, but we also need to hold onto it a little bit as well. Cause it, yeah. Cause it's kind of gone full circle yes. in that, in that regard. Right. And yeah. now it's like people are whinging and complaining yeah. about any little yeah. thing and it's like without any struggle, mm. you know, and it's like, geez, you don't know how easy you've got it. Yeah. Like, and that's what I'm hearing like with these uh, institutions and things like that. Mm. It's like, and I mean, look, it's a touchy subject and we definitely mm. don't need to go down the whole cancel culture yeah, route, no. but it's just like, you're just getting called out for any little thing now, which yeah. it's like, you're saying it between friends. I mean, sure, yeah. it's a podcast or whatever yeah. as well and you're putting it up and yeah. people are seeing it and hearing it or what mm-hmm. have you, but it's like, it's just a free-form conversation. That's what I personally yeah. love about podcasts. They can go anywhere at any time oh, and absolutely. maybe you will say a few things that are a little bit on yeah. the nose, but it's like between friends and like yeah, we're bringing you in as the viewer, as the listener into yeah. our friendship, into our conversation. So yeah. you know us a bit better, you know, we're being vulnerable, we're sharing Absolutely. things. And you get things wrong sometimes. Yeah. And you say things that maybe like afterwards, oh. you don't even know what you're saying half the time, <laughs> yeah. you don't know what you're going to say. And you hear it back, you're like, oh my God, like the, the amount oh. of things that are, when I Absolutely. listen back to these, I'm just like, geez, Dan, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> but it's, um, well, yeah. and he never worked again. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah that, and man. that's the thing too with uh, mm. being an actor and like maybe a little hesitancy at the start of wanting mm. to do this podcast is like, you you yeah. you can be judged on what you're going to say, and people might not want to work with you. And 100%. like, as an actor, you want everybody to want to work yeah. with you, like because you want to be available for the projects that you choose to you yeah. know go for. Absolutely. And it's a it's a tough thing, but it's just like at the end of the day, if you're having fun, you're having a good time doing yeah. it, and you want to do it. Yeah. I'm just going to do the goddamn thing. Yeah. And that that would that was me at the start, and mm. it probably played on a little bit of the fact of why like my full name is Daniel Goodwin and yeah, I'm yeah. on those going deep with Dan Good, you know, yeah, and yeah. just sort of got that. It's just like that slight little separation yeah, yeah. between this and this, but really it's not like yeah. it's, you know, it's all me. I'm the same exact person on the mic, on yeah. the camera as I am when I'm not on it. So, and I, and I want to stay like that, you know, yeah, I don't sure. want to, you can't, you get found out pretty quickly if you're like acting oh, yeah. on something like this, <laughs> like people are going to see straight through it the way you, where you are. So yeah, man, for yeah sure. that's what I appreciate about it. But yeah, it is a, 
that's a thing, man. With like, I think people that do bad things mm. and ill will towards each other, like there's yeah. sort of like some fundamentals that it's like, are you a good person or are you not? Yeah. You know, and if you're bullying someone or you go, you know, you. Mm doing things that aren't right you know deep down that you're doing things that aren't right yeah. and and you rightfully should get called out for mm. it but it's just like any little thing now that that you misstep and do wrong it's just like putting straight in the spotlight it's just like we grow as people you know yeah. we make mistakes it's the most fundamental yeah. flaw that we all have in common yeah, is man. that we make mistakes and yeah. we hopefully learn from them and be better people right yeah. well i mean i guess the only mistake really is if you've done something wrong you don't learn from it mm. then it's a mistake if you, if, yeah. if you fuck something up like we are human. We yeah. make mistakes. As long as you learn from it and you improve from it, and is it really a mistake or is it just a learning curve? It's just a learning curve. Yeah. I mean, that's part of the human process, I think. It's exactly. like, it's where we went from, like, is, mm. you know, yeah. as apes or whatever, if that's where yeah, we yeah. evolved yeah. from yeah. truly, you know, Wherever. which is, I think the, you know, the, the jury's, <laughs> jury's there. Yeah. That's, it's been settled that that's probably where we evolved from, whether there was a hand by aliens in there. Yeah. I don't Who know. Who knows? <laughs> like, I kind of hope get so. get the aliens in here. I'm all for it. Bring oh, the so aliens on. I'm all Bring for the down. alien chat. Bring them down, man. I was saying to Chris before the podcast, hey, I was like, I was like, man, if you know anyone that's crazy conspiracy theorists, like, let me know. Let's have them on, man. I want to get some alien chats on. That's some of my favorite. Rogan that he talks about that and gets those people on. I'm just, I entertain it you know it's not that I 100% believe it yeah. but I definitely think I mean I think it would be naive to think that there's not another yeah. civilization of some or being of some sort yeah. out there in this universe or universes that are clearly out there so it's like why would we be so naive to think that we're just the only ones you yeah. know I think, I think I've just I reached a point in my life man where nothing's going to surprise me anymore yep. I'm just like yeah. Like I, I don't I sit back at that too yeah. yeah I'm just like yep I'm not yeah. really surprised I'm kind of like okay but yeah yeah yeah, yeah okay yeah like it Anything at this point, like to, to sort of deviate a little bit and then we don't need to get into it. But like, if you look at like 9-11, for instance, mm. like if, if they came out and they're like, absolutely inside job, I'd be like, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. But if they're like, no, absolutely, definitely wasn't, i like, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Like it's, it's not going to surprise me at this point. I know. And it's just possible. like nothing that some yeah. of the US government and stuff does <laughs> really would surprise me either. <laughs> like, eh? I've seen like enough movies government. about it. Like, look, oh. it, uh, my mind is open. Yeah, my man. mind is yeah. open. Just, like, just convince me or or yeah. not. Like, I don't I don't really mind, but I will entertain it. So let's 100%. go. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm not saying there are aliens, but if ET walks through the door, I'd be like, hey, man. I'll be like, hey, bro, I've got another mic in there. So <laughs> yeah, jump yeah. on. Sit down, bro. Let's hang out. I'd be like, I don't need it. I can communicate oh, telepathically God. with How you, cool Daniel. Would that be? <laughs> How cool would that be? It would be pretty awesome. Oh, man. That it, oh, this podcast would go nuts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Talk about viral, right? Forget Joe Rogan, man. We've got ET in here. <laughs> yeah. Next level. Yeah. He's going to be a reoccurring guest if that's the case. <laughs> Whenever he wants to come on, it's open to you, ET. Mm. Or what, any extraterrestrial? What do they call? It? They call it something else now, don't they? Like, oh, what, I have no oh, like idea. when it was like, um, like flying, you know, flying objects or unidentified flying yeah, objects. Yeah. They call it. Oh, was it AFT or something? Um, oh, I can't even remember now. Jesus. Yeah, I remember rocking. hearing him. Yeah. yeah, he mentioned on his podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rogan has said it. Yeah, they, they, they just chat. It was silly, but uh, Jeremy Corbell, he's got some interesting stuff. Yeah. Eh? Like in a lot of, um, I've seen a lot of those. Uh, I don't know. Have you watched the Bob Lazar? No, no, Area 51 no. flying saucers. No. It's great, man. Yeah. Get around it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, he's had him on a pretty controversial guest. Yeah, I, guess I he did watch saying, that episode. Yeah, 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 it's great. Oh, then that compelled me straight away to watch. I've seen it twice now. Yeah. I showed my parents as well and watched it. It's it's pretty awesome. But I've seen quite a few of the other ones as well. Mm. Um, yeah, Phenomenon. I think there's Dissidents or something as well. Yeah, there's a few of them that are going around. But it's just like, and it's just funny that it all sort of started to come about when you know, they just started slowly releasing some sort of information. Like, what are you doing now? Like, just to get you away from thinking about the other control yeah, that yeah. they're trying to create oh. with the whole thou shall not be spoken yeah. scenarios all, that we've been going through the last couple all, of years. It's all magic, mate. Oh, Look over man. here. I'll it's, move the coin. Oh, I know. <laughs> it's just, I don't understand how people can't actually see that. But, um, I mean, you know, whatever. People yeah. are entitled to believe what yeah. they want to believe in. Like, but it's just a funny thing that it's just like something that was so trustworthy before the sources and your governments yeah. and things like that that you put all the trust in the world and mm. are just not now like you just don't mm. even know what that what wall they're trying to pull over your eyes most yeah. of the time and and it's like and i understand it from the point of view of older people than like mm. us like our parents and you know grandparents yeah. and stuff because i mean they were at a time when there wasn't any media really yeah like, exactly uh, they had yeah. the radio and things like that where you just believed in yeah. whatever you were hearing and then like media like you know cnn or whatever mm. like top flight um news whatever 
uh, country you were in, you trusted what was coming out. I remember watching yeah, as a kid and I'm just like, whoa, you know, like you take yeah. it in because you're like- They won't lie to us. <laughs> no, no, exactly. You don't. Yeah. And to be fair, they probably weren't really a lot of the time back no. then, but now it's just like, there's so many different agendas to it and people yeah. politicizing things and different money in different areas to control this. And then, okay, I'll toe the line if you're going to give me said amount, yeah. you know, or what are you going to kick back on this? Or are you going to make this disappear another time? And it's just like, but you're messing with people's lives, you know? Yeah. And it's just, I don't know, I don't, you don't even know what to believe anymore. Yeah. Or like, you know, you and I are just like mm. open-minded to it when you're like, yeah, yeah. okay, I, I'm, you know, I don't put it past that happening right yeah. now, you know? Mm. Like I'll believe it, you know? Yeah. It's just, okay. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent, man. I think, but it's, it's a great time for podcasting because yeah. independent media, man, people coming out and not skewing it, just having objective conversations about stuff and bringing information up objectively, not subjectively. I think it's, it's super important. People need to be informed enough to make their own decisions. Yeah. They don't need to be spoon fed one half of it to skew them towards something. Just give them the information. Yeah. You know? And you make your own decision with yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, it's your own life and mm. your own kids' lives or, yeah. you know, loved ones' lives that um, you're, you're sort of in charge of or, you know, it's in your... It's in your um, it's in your realm of control. Mm. So yeah, just provide all the information possibly and make yeah. your own idea with it. You know, absolutely. It's just and don't try and force it on other people. Yeah, like just because you believe something doesn't mean that I have to. I'm open That's to true. hearing what you think yeah. about it, but I'm allowed my own opinion on it. Absolutely, man. And you and it shouldn't really exactly change how you feel about me if I just think of it as a different way. Why is your way right and mine yeah. isn't? Absolutely. Because I'm okay with you believing that yeah. like, and thinking whatever you want to do. Yeah. You yeah, do you, cool. boo. Yeah, you do exactly. You. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, it would be better if everyone had that attitude, I think, oh, sometimes. Man. But yeah. yeah, we can only do our best, right? But it's, Absolutely. Yeah. It's tough when it's like they're putting that into the education systems though and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's just that that's where it gets a little swirly. So yeah. it's like, and then, yeah, it's just control mm. like getting people early on to obviously yeah. they grow up and they're the ones that are going to be leaders in this world at some yeah. point and 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 making a lot of the things innovating and mm. and and running government organizations yeah, and things sure. like this and then they've got everyone else underneath them that they're going to have to force these mm. agendas on it's just yeah it's yeah. tough, tough I, think, uh, I think one of the things they've they stopped doing like don't quote me i could be completely wrong here but i just kind of assume that they've they've stopped teaching sort of critical thinking yeah they're just kind of spoon feeding information, you know? So I think generally kids today, if they're not growing up learning how to look and question something and go, well, is, is that, is that really what's going on? Like, you know, in whatever it is, it doesn't, it doesn't matter any facet of anything, just being able to actually take a step back and think about the information you're being fed and whether it's, Correct on it and be able to form an opinion on that. And having an open discussion yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think oh. that's what they used to encourage with like, yeah. I mean, I never went to university personally, so I don't really know, but I know like colleges and things like that in the States or whatever, um, the higher education realm of things that used to be what it was all about and like yeah. encouraging that kind of uh, discourse and everything with people. So, because everybody has different views, you know, it was a great thing. So I don't know when that sort of got lost yeah. out exactly. Um yeah, I, I I have no idea, but that's what I'm hearing from sources and people that have younger kids or yeah. whatever in schools and 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 that higher education realm is that, and you can kind of clearly see, yeah, yeah, the people that are coming out from it and what they're calling for and where the current climate and culture yeah, is at. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell me about your journey. Like, how do you get started into like podcasting, acting? Where would you start? Well, really, uh, probably the a turning point for me is like like you. Like mm. I always. I was attracted to, to yeah. film movies, you know, and TV and like that. I found it um, very inspiring and engaging. Like, and I think it was, if I look back on it now, it was outlets of understanding and knowing things about people in life that I wasn't experiencing in my own life, whether it be a little bit imaginary or make-believe, I don't know, you know, but I was open to it and learning from it. Um, and that was really engaging for me as younger. I think I, I used to sit back and be a little quieter, you know, and reserved and just, and just take yeah. it all in, you know, like a, a, just sitting on the, sitting on the sidelines sometimes inject when I wanted to, you know, um, like always had like good group of friends, friends and stuff like that, but I might not be in the loudest one at, at certain point until I really came out of my shell, if you will. Um, but yeah, when I, I didn't even realize it at the time, but yeah, I think it was something that I always kind of wanted to do. 
Um, and yeah, basically, oh man, like went through a bit of a breakup thing back in New Zealand, um, where I'm from. I don't know if you realize that or not. No, no, no. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hadn't picked up that accent <laughs> at all. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I was over there and that happened. And then I was sort of just like, I had always talked about a bit with friends, you know, wanting to go to Australia and check it out and stuff, but it just never really came eventuated. But I came over with a friend, checked the place out, saw Brizzy. I was like, this is quite homely. Like, mm. I was just like, well, city life, you know, <laughs> coming from a small town, yeah. it was pretty crazy. You know, I was yeah, like, this yeah. is huge. And you came over on a boat, you're like, what are yeah. those things in the sky? Those planes? Fresh <laughs> off the boat, bro. <laughs> but yeah, it was an aeroplane, actually. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and it was just, yeah, it was crazy. And I was like, whoa, this is awesome. I vibe with this. Went back and sort of got some things in order. I was like, right, I'm doing it. I'm going yeah. over by myself, you know? And so I came over, yeah, all well, my family's back home and yeah. just came over, man. And it was just, it was something that I had to do for the evolution of me. I had to yeah. get out of um, where I was at. Not that it was bad or anything, it was great. Um, and yeah, like family's great and everything like that. That, but I just I need I knew there was more out there and I needed to go explore it. I needed yeah. to be an explorer and get on my own too and just go and figure things out and see what sort of you know the man I could be, you know. Yeah, for and sure. I really I I mean I clocked up literally like 10 years living over here recently. So nice. that's a decade, man. And yeah, thanks, thanks, man. Out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's a beautiful country, beautiful people, yeah. man. I've loved every bit of it. You know, it's all a journey. There's been many ups and downs, but I wouldn't change any of it because the growth from yes. that is just astronomical, man. Sure, like it's man. just it's it was crazy. But yeah, I just sort of, man, I just started training, working out in the gym and stuff like that. Got a bit more confidence about me, especially after the breakup and all that sort of stuff. And it was just like I was a new man. I was, yeah. I was sort of see it as more of a boy to a man, you know, yeah. like before, you know, um, sure, like, you know, there's aspects of man. But now that I see it, you yeah. know, the growth is just like, yeah, you know, you're developing. Yeah, man, I kind of just fell into it, to be honest, the acting game. Like, it just got that confidence about me and I was just taking swings and yeah. just didn't care. <laughs> with girls, with everything, yeah. I just didn't care. If yeah. I struck out, I just yeah. got confidence from it and I just kept moving forward, yeah, man. Yeah. And um, yeah, it fell into the acting game, got a got into an agency, got a bit of a mentor there. We ended up really good friends. Nice. Um made pilots and stuff together, did a lot of things like that. So he really schooled me up on the game and then just, you know, you figure your own way out from there yeah. as well and just connected with a bunch of people, just started acting. Then you're like, oh, okay, I can't just sit back and wait for my agent to get things, you know, mm. like I want to start doing stuff myself. So you start producing, writing, connecting with other yeah. people. You start making films, you know, and it's just you start moving and shaking and it's just – been a different uh, it's just another realm of of things you know like you say you're coming from that one world and the army yeah. and stuff and then you're coming into this other you know normal life and then you've got the acting stuff as well which is another realm in itself yeah. and it's just yeah those worlds colliding you know but yeah you find your people you jive and you just yeah it's just a con i feel like it's a creative consciousness you know when you get on yeah. set because it's oh, all yeah it's all just like all this energy bubbling up and and, and getting put into this project into yeah. this thing to make it something amazing you know and that's just a, that's a beautiful thing in itself, you know, and, so, and a feeling of um, like uh, fulfillment as well yeah. or, or being with people that you're like that and bringing things out in you that you didn't think were there before and yeah. you meet other people that's the same yeah, way, yeah. That, that, that mindset, you know, and it's just, it's an awesome thing, man. And just, yeah, you just grow worlds of confidence. And sure, there's been a lot of ups and downs in that whole area, yeah. you know, as well. Um from being at that point of, because once I found, I was just like, go, go and just, yeah. just constantly just what's the next thing, you know, and just like, but you really do sometimes need to take a break from things and realize where you've grown from and where you've come from because burnout's a real thing. And I spoke about it with Anna on the yeah. last episode, yeah, that oh, we yeah. both sort of had that. And that that was a real, that was a pretty low, low moment. It was a tough moment yeah. for me um, when sort of some things came to a collision course and uh, it just like all you know, just kind of exploded or whatever. And I had to really, like, I lost a lot of that confidence that I was yeah. saying that I had and that passion. It really, it was tough, like the situation that I was in. Um, but like anything that makes you stronger, you know, I, I realized that maybe I I was just going at it like a ball in a china shop, yeah. you know, and just like knocking things over left, right and center, but still getting getting my way with things and, and had a lot of success, you know, some good roles, some great films that yeah. I was involved in, man, and it wouldn't change at all. Um, but yeah, it's just, it, the creator, it felt like, the creative industry was something that it was always yeah. in me that I just didn't really realize it before. And I think it comes from an imagination point as well. I've got a vast imagination. Yeah. So that sort of runs wild in your own mind from that, um, being that drawn back person, taking everything in. I think yeah. that's, it, there was, it was always there, you know, to be ready to engage, but yeah. And it's just with the podcast, man, it was, um, my mate was always on me going, oh, listen to Rogan, you know, you should yeah, listen to yeah. this and this and this. And it, it's like three hours. Yeah, I don't know if I've got the time for that, time, you know, bro. man. Yeah. Like, uh, there's other stuff I've got to be doing, yeah. um, scripts to learn and, and everything. Yeah. And um, 
once I found it, it was just at a point in my life where I think I found it at the right time. Yeah. Like the acting, like everything, everything happens for a reason, yeah. man. And I just got into it and yeah, I was just like, oh, this is a wealth of knowledge. You know, this is mm. awesome. Like, and there's all these other people having these conversations about things that you just don't know anything about. Yeah. But it's just so educational and inspiring. And um, Rogan, like anyone else, has birthed a mini podcast around. Yeah, like he tells man. everyone to do it. And yeah, I was like... Yeah. I was like, you know what? I have some similar characteristics there to Rogan is that yeah. I have a very curious mind and yeah. I love connecting with people. I love conversing like this one-on-one -on -one and just talking. And it seems to be something that I always found um, when I'm talking to people is that we connect really easy and they're, like, mm. they're always like, oh, I'm telling you things I don't even tell my best friend, you know? <laughs> like, so you just open. If you're an open yeah, book, yeah. It, they drop their barrier and then they sort yeah. of tell you things. And it's just, it's a great thing. I think that's not... Uh, something that's lost in this day and age, especially with technology yeah. and everything. And, and that I think we need to get back to too, because especially it's scary where it's all going with this metaverse, oh, this man. and that, and the digital realm of everything. It's, um, nice level. it's, it's crazy. And, and so that's something that I think is lost. And so I was like, you know what, I'm doing it. I'll research it. I'll get the right audio gear. Cause that was the main thing for me is like, I need to have the audio at least, 90% good because there's some there's top flight podcasts I'm listening to yeah. that's still average with sirens going off yeah, in the background yeah. and all this crazy shit and it just like it's not as good I was like get the audio good first you know yeah. that's what you need and then you can move to the footage you know and yeah. get a bit of production value and get Chris on board like the production value is just next level like yeah. the, with the oh, setup that great, we're going on yeah it's he's so awesome. much good stuff he's, he's awesome he's out of control it's a plug for you brother yeah <laughs> <laughs> and um yeah so it's it's great man and I just love doing it I love connecting with yeah. people and so it was just something that was natural and sure you get so much better at it as you go though like yeah. clearly at the start you're like loving the sound of your own voice yeah. and you want, you want to talk like and, and you're just like oh man you've got a guest on for a reason let them talk and you just yeah. you guide the conversation where you want it to go but the main yeah. thing for me was been just being a free-flowing conversation yeah. I don't want this being a rigid interview where I'm like question question answer answer yeah. and like delve deeper and like piss people off you know yeah, I'm not yeah. trying to get a sound bite out of you to, like to snap at this and that it's just I just want to have a free-flowing conversation I think it's a it's a dying art form yeah man but it's sure. also a massive art form that podcasting have taken over is like one of the mainstream media devices out there now that yeah. everybody can plug and play straight in their car, straight in the gym, straight yeah. anywhere they're going for a walk, you know, mm. you have it in your ear. So it, it's awesome. And I've loved doing it like this the third year in now. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I just hope to do a lot more of them, you know, fine tune, streamline everything. So yeah, for sure. But it, it takes a lot of time, dude. It really yeah. does. And um, yeah, man, like I, I, it'd be like eight to 10 hours Really? To for, to from start to begin yeah, with yeah. a podcast. That's wow. what I would say. Interesting. Yeah. Maybe some, you know, seven, eight, but if you yeah. go into time, like you used to have to set up everything, yeah. you know, take an hour or so, do the podcast, you know, it could be an hour and a half, two yeah. hours, you know, then um, you pack down everything. Yeah. Then you got to, I, I like get all the audio down, you know, and do all the synopsis and everything like that. Get it off to a sound engineer, which yeah. I'm great that I've got that because it gets a professional audio sound, you know, like even though it's good gear, it'll get it anyway. It's one less thing for me to learn. Um, although I tried to a little bit at the start and yeah, it was just, this was the better way to do it. But yeah, you do all that, edit the footage, sync it up with the footage, do all that. Yeah. Like it's like, it's even, it's a beast. Like well, Chris has got this set up and then he does the majority yeah, so of it. Or yeah. when he's got other things on, on his plate, he does like a, you know, a lot of the groundwork. And then I come in like the last episode, I edited all that together, but he synced it all up for me because yeah. it's quite hard syncing yeah, all the be, sound oh, up and dude. everything. Like it's, cause it goes out of sync. Um, with that long form footage yeah, yeah. Um, just eventually even the best program that you got like I, yeah. I don't think you can get it right so it takes certain oh, it takes man. time man and then you do the so thumbnails knowledge. and you do all this like stuff for it and you get the episode out and you just hope people watch it or listen to Dude. it you know it's just it's a That's beast so much work it's, it's a lot That's of work huge. man and, and I work full time as yeah. well and then chase yeah. this and the other dream. things and acting yeah. and everything else outside of it so it's a beast man but yeah. that was part of why I brought this place so I could have a start setting up the studio yeah. you know here and then have all the gear ready to go we can try and get some more um episodes like running yeah. so we can get more consistent with it and get them out more mm. um to hope to get more people you know watching and listening yeah and yeah that 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 was it really so yeah it's, it's been a beast man but i, I love doing it with it because i you yeah. know get to sit down with interesting people like yourself man, and have a chat so <laughs> oh, it's great boring man it's <laughs> a boring dude you, you say that but i mean hey man you just be modest like oh. it's everyone's got a story you know and we're all going through it and i think the more of us that actually talk yeah. about these things that are going on in our lives and the way we yeah. operate we realize that we're not really that different from each other and we can learn yeah. from each other there's no need to stunt everyone's growth we can all grow together and be a bigger greater consciousness you know 
yeah, man. great for the human race, oh, man, I, is the way I see it. Like why, I mean, I love the digital realm and all this new technology and stuff that's going on, but I really feel like you lose, you lose a lot of yourself in that. And it's just, a, it's a beast, man. It's yeah. a thing. Like, uh, and I know when I stepped away from a little less social media, mm. it, it's hard because you need it yeah. to get the view. Oh. You need it to get things you need it to you need to see media. that you're staying productive people are watching mm. it going oh yeah they're doing on set here he's doing shooting this and that oh i should get him on for my thing you know like it's it it's a beast yeah and you lose yourself in it but i definitely found when i stepped away a little more from the social media that it was way better for me yeah um it's not good for so it, health, it's, for sure. it's hard man it's 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 a, it's a it's a juggling act it's a constant balancing act and anyone that's got a down um hit me up yeah. <laughs> oh man yeah i hate it i'm terrible on social media, like I know, I'm just, I don't care enough to, like I know I need to, like I should be posting all the time yeah. and trying to, you know, because that's the way the industry is even moving. So everything's on social media uh, and views and followers. I don't care, man. Yeah. Like I've, I've had times where I've gone out even with like some of the army boys, like, hey man, you want me to get a photo for the gram? And I'm like, what? Yeah. No, man, I don't care. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, yep, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, let's, yeah, fine, let's yeah. do it. It's cool because you can look back on that memory like, yeah, yeah. that was a good fucking night. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like, and you're like, yeah, yeah. And you didn't, have, you still have the memories, oh. and that's the most important yeah. thing. But it's like when you go to a concert and stuff, eh, and yeah. everyone's like filming it all on their phone. Like, I'll get a couple of videos and yep. stuff. Yep, Put for the away. gram, whatever. Yep. Post up, keep it personally, so mm. I can look back on it and see and know yeah. that I went there. I know I've got the experience, but definitely. You lose things, you yeah. know, in your mind as you, there's only so much you can hold on there. You look at the video, it jogs you back. You're like, yeah, oh, that was awesome, man. Like, and you remember all these like <laughs> snippets of the night, eh? Like sometimes the snippets because <laughs> yeah. you're having a good time. And um, yeah, it's just, it's a great thing. But I think it's just, I think we're losing ourselves in it, man. Yeah. I really do. I think we're like a slave to our phone, you know? Oh, for sure. And it's just, it's so good to disconnect and get back out of nature and really feel what you feel in your DNA, you know, and and in that true, I don't know, just that true organic thing that's around you because that isn't, you know, and that life is just like, it's, it's something you're putting out there, but it's just a lot of times it's not real life, but I I don't know, man, it's, it's a struggle. I think we're all dealing with this and we're going to constantly be dealing with this, especially the way, especially the way it's all going Mm. now, man. And it's like, when I thought it was absolutely nuts when people were getting this um this metaverse idea with the things of like buying digital real estate yep. online and what they were paying for it like actually paying for a house you're paying for it in a digital yeah. realm where oh yeah you can invite your friends over online to come and party like yeah. snoop's got his own little compound yeah, yeah. and stuff like yeah. that i'm just like i don't understand this or you know you go to the, the pub yeah like, and like, or yeah. go back to real life where you're yeah. actually living in you know but and it's it's crazy and then it started to make a little more sense to me. Mm. I haven't looked, gone down the rabbit hole because I'm scared to and I really don't want to, but it's like I'm starting to understand now why they're doing that because everything is digital. Yes. We can't get away from it. Yeah. It just seems like it's the technological advancement that we're never going to be without, whether it be a blessing or a curse down the track. I do not know. But it's just now I understand because people are like spending their time on the digital space all the time and you're not nothing. You ain't shit. If you're not in the yeah. digital space and it's not on the gram, it ain't real, right? Mm-hmm. Um, if you didn't post that workout yeah. on Facebook, oh, man, it didn't dude. happen. 10% gains <laughs> per post. That's it. And it's just, um, I don't know, man. It's just, I think that's why, because people are spending so much time, that's going to be the new, like as the clout thing. But it's yeah. like, if you have a house there, it's worth so much in the future because if it goes down to this like AI stuff and all this um, virtual reality stuff and you're living in that space more than you're living in the actual physical space and reality, yeah. then that's why that real estate starts to becoming a lot more of a commodity and people want to hang out there because that's where their life is now. Yeah. And the, and it from what used to be maybe 70, 30 and 70 being in real life might go the other way and then that's where that, it's so yeah. crazy to think yeah. that that could be worth more than a physical house like I've just brought here. Yeah, 100%. I just, I, it's, it it's hard to fathom. I don't even, I can't even imagine what older people than us feel like. Oh, but man. it's just, that's where I, I can see where it's going. And mm. I don't know if I like it. Um, yeah, look, I'm not a fan of it going that way. But I mean, you look at it, I don't think it's, I don't think we're getting a way out of this. It's not happening. Short of like nuclear war, killing all technology and us starting from the stone age again 
it's where we're going. The book of Eli. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, man. Yeah. There's, there's no way out of it. I think the, the generations growing up are getting more and more like you like two year olds can do stuff on iPads. I know. I'm like, how, how the fuck did they do that? I've got no idea. It blows my mind, man. And, so, and the thing is that it's not bad that they're learning how to do technology no. because that's where the majority of probably yeah. the jobs are and the good jobs rather mm. than doing a physical job. I mean, I have done pretty much the majority of my life, so I know what yeah. that's like and it's taxing. Yeah. <laughs> and so I can understand why they'd want to go down this way yeah. when you can work from home and just do a few things and yeah. you're like getting paid for the day. It's crazy. Oh. Like I can't even fathom how good that <laughs> must be for people. Well, I think, it, I think it's good on some level, but I think on another level, it's probably not, it's not that good. I mean, I think, I think one of the things that, is important in life is struggle, like like real struggle. Mm. Not you know, I'm not saying that you know you have to deal with family members dying or whatever. I'm just just in general having to struggle. I think is really character building and it puts things in perspective. I think that's probably half of the reason that we've got to this point of cancel culture and everyone being offended all the time. It's because the people that are getting really offended they don't they don't really actually have any real struggles, mm. so they vent struggles. Yeah, exactly. I think as humans, we need we need that. To, to move forward. Yeah. And if you don't have it, you're going to find it somewhere. It doesn't matter where it is. It could be anything. And I think that's where you can often get people that do the dark things that they do as well yeah. is because they don't have that outlet and mm. they're so frustrated with themselves in life that that's why they go to choose to do those yeah. crazy things that they do, you know, mm. and it's just like the hate for the world or whatever. Yeah. But it's, yeah, man, I don't know. It's It's pretty scary. Yeah, it is. Who knows, man? Let's, th- let's think well, positive. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, you could be, yeah. I mean, I'm still optimistic about it, but yeah. it's just like when you see all these things happening in the world as well, mm-hmm. it's just like, are we going for some sort of reset? You know, like, oh. is this the way of like the Who greater knows? power or the greater thing that yeah. that's there is, is um, nudging us towards our own fucking self destruction? Like, yeah. it's, it's, yeah, I don't know. Well, it's, it's, it's one of those things uh, with the NFT space that we found is that it's, it seems to be quite indie at this stage. Yeah. And the community as a whole seems to be sort of pushing back against big business, as it were. They're not really keen on on big business. I can't remember what company it was. It might have been Ubisoft or something. Like, don't quote me on that. But one of them saw, you know, there's a lot of money to be made. It's, it's up and coming. So they tried to make like an, an NFT line and, and get it started. And it tanked because everyone was like, hey, man, no, no, no. Get out of this space. This is you've got that corporate world out there. You've got all the the money already. This is for like creative people. Like this is for small people, independent people to to thrive. And we don't want you pushing in on that space. Yeah. So I think it's 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 an interesting time in that. Yeah, I don't. I honestly, I still don't exactly understand the whole <laughs> NFT thing. Like, I don't. I do, but I don't, you yeah. know, like I, I, yeah. I get it's kind of like a virtual playing card. Like I remember yeah. cards back in the day, you yeah. know, like it, you collect them like sports cards or mm. Pokemon cards or whatever yeah, it was yeah. back in the day. And it's kind of like the digital form and that you're the only one that owns it or the mm. select amount of people, you're the only ones that yeah. own it. And I, I, I mean, do people trade them online? I know they sell they them sell and stuff them. and they it's like, them, oh, yeah. cool, I got this, but I can go and screenshot that and like, oh, I got this, you know, but you don't really own it, but no. I do, but I've got the digital thing. On my, it's just like, I don't know, <laughs> it's a thing. And I still think it's like, it's a clout. It seems like yeah, maybe a yeah. clout thing yeah, it is in the digital sure. space again, what yeah. I'm saying about having the property and everything. It's just because they can see that, it's moving in this direction. Mm. They can see a way to make money in this yeah. in this and something cool. And everyone's chasing clout, you know, mm. these days, it seems like. I mean, maybe that everyone always was anyway, but yeah. it's a human thing because it evokes the emotion and you that the yeah. dopamine hit and all the rest of it, like the you yeah, know, man. Instagram posts and all the rest of it. Um but yeah, it's like I still don't, I'm not like I'm gonna go and pay. <laughs> you know, a thousand bucks for that, yeah. like certain picture there in the yeah. digital space, just so I can go show it off to people and go, I fucking own this, man. Yeah. There's only 10 other people that own this. Like, well, you it's, know. it's, it's moving. Um, I think at the start at the start of the movement, it was, it was more about that. You buying a picture. It was kind of cool. To yeah. Show your friends. Yeah. But as the space is evolving and it's evolving like rapidly, very, very rapidly, it's getting more where that that picture is not just a picture. It's a digital access card essentially to that club and that community that you're part of or whatever project that is. Yeah. And having that affords you certain benefits like a like a 24-hour gym access card. Yeah. You know what I mean? Within that community. 
is sort of what people are buying into. So like uh, Gary V, I'm, ass- I'm assuming you know who Gary V is. I do, but I don't really yeah. know. Yeah, like a lot. Very, very prominent in the business entrepreneurship space yeah. and he's he's all over that. You know, he's very heavily in the internet when it first kicked off and sort of been, he sort of sees what's coming and jumps in board and what he's jumping on board generally is he's pretty correct on where the world is going. He's very, very yeah. smart in that way. Yeah. And so he's got like an NFT line. And they're just doodles that he does, like hand draws them and like the art itself. Like it's crap. He loves doing it, which is great. Like an artistic expression. He's having fun. It's awesome. Yeah. The pictures themselves are not that great. But what that picture with the smart contract, which is like a digital contract that's written, it allows the owner of that to be an access to his private Discord channel. All right. So you've got like his normal Discord, but then if you own one, you're a holder, you get another one where you could have like um, Elon Musk or Donald Trump or whoever, like all these big prominent figures, whoever's in his circle are in this and you can talk to them, like go into the room and sit down with Elon Musk and so, have a chat. Okay. So what do they have? Sorry. What did you say it was? Discord. So Discord's like a, um, it's like a chat room app. Website okay. thing. and that's yeah, linked yeah. to NFTs or just his NFT? No, no, no. It's linked to, to most, most, if not all. Yeah. I would, I would say at this stage, all projects okay. have got a Discord channel, a Discord okay. server that you jump on, and you can communicate with the founders and other community members. Yeah, and it's like um, like an open chat room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you can and you can set like as a founder or creator, like you can easily create a Discord for this podcast. And people could jump on and they could chat to you and say, oh, you know, I think you should have this person or whatever. Yeah. You could start that, but you can set up the different channels with different permissions so that only certain people can get involved. So me and you can have our own private one on the same server and no one else can even see that that exists. Yeah. So you buy one of his, you go through into his Discord. He's got a thing that verifies with your NFT wallet and says, yeah, yeah, Dan's bought one one of mine. He's got it. And suddenly you can view this channel and you jump in there and, Elon Musk's in there, Mark Cuban, like whoever, whoever his sphere of people are. And you're talking to these people and they'll hold uh, what they call AMAs, ask me anything sessions where they'll jump on audio, like an audio call with everyone in that channel can all jump on and just chat. Like or with yeah. audio yeah. or, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, a, wow. like a three-way phone call or whatever, you know, like a FaceTime with a bunch of people. Yeah. And you can talk to them like we're sitting in this room and have a chat with these people who are, Super prominent. Okay. You can pick their brains on stuff. Another thing that he has is Gary Vee has these um, like symposium seminar things that he does, conventions that he does like once every year or whatever. And the tickets for them are f- ridiculous. I yeah. think it's something like $3,000 or something a ticket. Oh, it's wow. ridiculous. But he gets, he gets like Mark Cuban and stuff come along. They're really big. If you buy one of his NFTs, you get free access to his com- to his um, conference for like three years or whatever that, whatever that, thing that he's designed it around okay. so it becomes an access card where you get benefits for having that yeah you're a member of a club yeah yeah and so you can go ahead and screenshot mine but it means shit because it yeah, yeah. it's not in your wallet it doesn't have the smart contract attached to it yeah so you can't use it you can't like, it's yeah cool. yeah yeah 100 percent. i've never had that explained mm. in all the things that i've heard or listened to yeah. like that like where there's actually this realm of this club yeah. that that's why you buy i mean that makes that's, sense that makes a lot more sense buying it. Yeah, yeah yeah i mean people aren't really talking i mean how do you got to yeah. go and look to have that kind of explanation because i mean even yeah. rogan had that beeple dude on there yeah. which his artwork is fantastic mm. he tried to get that guy to explain it and yeah. through the whole podcast I know the guy was, he probably is in a dark room creating these things a lot yeah, and doesn't yeah. talk to many people because clearly his conversation mm. skills weren't very great. But yeah. he tried to ask him a straight out question and he just never said anything like that to explain the NFT. And yeah. Joe's just sitting there wanting to, I still don't think he probably knows exactly because no. I haven't heard that yet. Now yeah. that makes sense. That yeah. makes the world of sense to me that's, of why people would want to do it. That's it's just another ticket in this digital mm. space where everything seems to be moving. Yeah. And then like the thing that people aren't, really, you know, they're like, oh, why would anyone pay for a picture? Like, who cares? That's that's stupid. That's ridiculous. You know what I mean? Have you, have you seen this game Fortnite? All these kids sitting on there and they're buying skins that just change the character they run around, yeah. just change the look of it. And they're paying real money for this. It doesn't make them better at the game. It doesn't add any other benefit. It just looks cool. It looks cool. Yeah. Which is cool. It's a novelty. And that's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's fair, awesome. Yeah. You look at, you know, why would people want to, live in the metaverse, like that's never going to take off. You heard of World of Warcraft, mate? People lose their entire lives sitting yeah. there running around in a game where they don't even get real world money back. Yeah. 
you know, they can't, they can probably sell profiles and stuff, but they can't sell the actual in-game stuff. This is the way the world going, man. Mm. Pe- people are going to be buying this stuff. I've never played Fortnite in my life. Yeah. I don't think I've ever played World of Warcraft either. Mm. I mean, I used to like, I still like games yeah, and stuff. Yeah. I just don't really play. I just don't yeah. have time to oh, play man. them, to be honest. And I really like watching same, film and yeah. TV and, you know, for educational purposes and just yeah, and also get, yeah. get away from it professionally. There's yeah. a lot of reasons why I just yeah. absolutely love cinema, you know. Mm. And, um, but yeah, it's just there's only time, so much time of the day. But yeah, mm. I mean, I used to like games. I would still play them. Like I still yeah. play fight games or anything yeah, like that, or racing games or whatever. But I haven't played all those popular ones. Yeah. I know now, but it's but yeah, it's, okay. Those are sort of the first so steps into this metaverse. Yeah, you know, it's like the NFT um, realm. Yeah, yeah. So Adidas, for instance, has launched. I think they've launched it, or they're going to launch it in the metaverse. They're launching like a virtual store. Right. So you, Dan, jump on the metaverse, you create your Dan avatar, looks like you, talks like you, whatever. You can walk into that virtual store and try on all of their clothes. And yeah. you know your sizes. So you try it on and you can check it out. Yeah, I like that shirt. That looks sick. Yeah. You buy it and they ship it to you. So your avatar, A, gets that shirt because you bought it and you can put that on your avatar and walk around. Yeah. But you will get the physical shirt sent to your address. No so you're basically shop. It's like online shopping to a whole new level but would you really be able to see how good it looks because do you have like your exact fitting yeah. and measurements of well, your whole entire body you know the fit like well, for me that that's matters you know if you're buying a yeah, shirt for you know? sure but as a as a concept i mean obviously as technology gets better and better it's gonna be that way yeah you're gonna point. be virtual reality yeah. shopping as well yeah. it just seems like the virtual exactly. reality what ready player one and what those things yeah. have so much in common the fantasy about mm. living in this other world and everything like yeah. I'm all for I love sci-fi movies and yeah, all that yeah. sort of stuff balls deep in it love it <laughs> but it's just yeah it's like yeah it's that detachment from the real world yeah. isn't it into another world in itself where you can do anything you can mm. be anyone right I think yeah. that's the the dream of the whole thing yeah. um yeah wow well, okay yeah. I think I think generationally you and I are probably we're in one of those generations we're right on the, the border I yeah think pretty much anyone sort of five, maybe 10 years before us, it's going to be really hard for them to wrap their yeah. brain around. See, I can get my head, if I have mm. someone that explains it, I, I understand yeah. that exactly what you've said, but I've never heard that before. Mm. It's going to be clipped out and it's going to be up there yeah. on yeah. YouTube. Go for so, it, Go because for it. I, even my, a lot of my friends, like they have no idea. They've heard the same things as us or research, whatever, yeah. but I've never heard it explained like that. Like now yeah. it, it makes total sense. But yeah. Um, yeah, well, so, but I mean, what, how does one, I mean, you, obviously now I know that you, you're you in the yeah. space of NFTs and crypto as mm-hmm. well. And crypto is another thing yeah. in itself, right, oh. that, uh, that has, has come before None the NFTs. this is financial advice. <laughs> <laughs> this is purely for entertainment purposes. Yeah. But it's linked up, isn't it? Because you yeah. got to buy it through crypto, right? You can't yes. buy an NFT without crypto. No. But um, so how does one actually then make an NFT? Like obviously there's probably apps or engineers that yeah. make these. Um, yeah. Like So I'm guessing it's, you make this digital artwork, but yep. it has to be authenticated in some way yes. and go on, I'm assuming, like a server, like you said, yeah. to be accredited. Is there like a NFT accredited database or is so, it not like that yet? So it, they're kind of called uh, marketplaces. Yeah. Is what they're generally sort of referred to. And that, that would be what you're sort of talking about. So OpenSea.io is sort of the biggest one at the moment. Yeah. And it's I'm pretty sure it's only run on Ethereum. Okay, which is a cryptocurrency. Yeah, so it yeah. only holds that. So I believe at the moment we've got like Ethereum, Solana, and Polygon or Matic um, NFTs. It's sort of the only three at the moment. It, yeah. it will increase as the world gets, you know, crypto More gets adopted and, yeah, and yeah. Gets in, it'll go up. But that's sort of the biggest, it's the biggest and sort of the, the best run marketplace. It's a lot less buggy than the other ones. Yeah. But Ethereum gas prices are extravagant so it's it's sort of you just got to deal with it at the end of the day until the other ones really catch up yeah so you can create like an nft dan here could yeah draw one and upload it digitally and you could create through directly through OpenSea. you can create your nft on there and you can use like their stock standard smart contract and just attach it basically and bind the two and away you go yeah but they will charge you a bit more to do that because it's reusing all of their stuff. Yeah. Or you can create your own and mint it through your website. And minting is sort of the best to explain it. So minting is like when you 
purchase it straight from the factory. So it'd be, it'd be like it'd be like you ordering a car online and customizing it. Yeah. So putting all the options on, they're going to make that car specifically for you. That would be sort of the same process, minting, and then you can mint it from our website, and it will appear on your wallet, which you've got in a um, like a MetaMask wallet or a Trust wallet, whatever your chosen wallet is. Yeah. MetaMask is generally the one that's used. Yeah. And then you'll also create an OpenSea account. And when you buy it, it'll show up on your MetaMask, it'll show up on your OpenSea account. And then it'll also be shown, like just the picture sort of shown within our projects. Yeah. Um, OpenSea accounts so everyone can scroll through and have a look at them. Yeah. And is yeah. that when they can offer to buy something off yeah. you or yeah. you put it up in that said yeah. marketplace for sale yeah. at this certain crypto or whatever, yeah. Ethereum um, amount and then yeah. that's where it starts to trade. Yeah. And then when you are selling a few, does the price go up or that's depending on a market or is that so what you set kind of all, thing? It all depends upon market value. Yeah. Okay, so... The, when you look at a project on OpenSea, you can see what's called the floor price. The floor price is the cheapest price that one of the items is listed for. So that that it's very simply. So you can look there and you can see what the floor price is. And if the floor price is rising, obviously there's a lot of interest in it. So one of the ways that you want to keep your floor price up is through scarcity. You, you want less of yours to be for sale. Yeah. So that's where it comes down to the utilities and what the project is actually offering, what that access card gets you. Yeah. So if the benefits of that access card are crap, then people are like, oh. Uh, just the digital yeah. card, then it's yeah. just like, They're I've right. got a digital playing card. Yeah. yeah. Which is what I thought they were. Yeah. Yeah. So they'll look at so minting it because it's a reduced price at creation. Yeah. And then they'll look at flipping it really quickly on the secondary market, which would be open seas for a profit. And that floor price is going to start coming down and down and down because people aren't interested in what the project is offering. If you're offering a lot of stuff and people are really keen on what you're doing as a project and they see a future in it, they're not going to put theirs up for sale. So there's going to be less available and therefore the ones that are available are going to be a high price Yeah, because they can charge higher. So anything on OpenSeas though, whether it's for sale or not, you can make an offer on. You can just hit the buyer, the owner, because you can sit there and just click on the item and go bid and just offer a price. And a lot of the times if you're getting people bid on it, they're they're trying to, they're just trying to snag that real cheap deal. So they're going to offer you like ridiculously low prices and just try and hope that you're like, yeah, fuck it. Yeah. I want to get rid of it. Yeah. 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 Try try and get some liquidity. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, it's a a educational lesson right there. Yeah. It's it's a, it's a complicated space, but sort of once you get your head around it, things make sense. Yeah. There's a lot of terms that people are not going to understand. Yeah. So what, I mean, so you're involved, I know with a few yes. of your friends, right? So yeah, why don't yeah. tell us a little bit about what you guys have got going on. Uh, so we've created one called the Outback Martians. So a couple of friends of ours, mine, we got together like oh, maybe three, four months ago now. And we'd all been sort of watching the NFT space for about six or seven months. It just sort of been like, what, what's going on? Mm. Understanding. At first, I kind of thought, oh, man, like this is really complicated. It's going to be real difficult. Like I'd love to be able to get in there and and be involved, but it seems real difficult to get around. Yeah. But the more research I did in it and the more research became available because obviously at the very start of the space, nobody knew anything and it was really hard to find information. So the more it's grown, the more information has become available for us to learn about it. So we finally learned and I was thinking about it. I was like, man, it's actually, it doesn't seem too hard. Like once you kind of know what's going on, it's not that difficult in terms of steps to get this up and running. I could probably look at doing this. Yeah. And I was literally about to call my mate, John is very entrepreneurial and he called me. My phone was literally in my hand. He called me and he's like, Hey man, you heard about NFTs? And I was like, bro, that's let's do this. What do, what do you reckon? So we, we worked together with um, a couple of the other guys. So he's, he's like the lead partner of it. So we sort of run it together and then we've got a couple of guys, other partners with us. We've got a uh, developer, Jake over in Texas He's a legend. We got some other guys involved. It's it's great. So we decided we're gonna we ran through a couple of ideas, and then we decided um, John sort of sparked the idea, and I've run sort of the narrative. So I found that one of the things that and if people in general like with cinema and gaming and everything else is a story. They like having a story to follow. Yeah. So rather than just being a picture, and a lot of projects will do this where they just have like a series of pictures and they just go ah I don't know a bunch of uh, banana people hang out at this club and that's it. That's all they kind of give her. And we went, nah, let's, 
let's like run a proper storyline and we'll tie all of the drops and things in into this storyline. So we came up with a storyline that these Martians living on Mars were uh, trying to get off. Mars was dying. It's, it's, it's going downhill. They're technologically advanced. So they sent 8,500 of their core people off in a, spa- in a um, spaceship cross base to try and find somewhere else to terraform to, to start a new colony. And as they're in cryo sleep, an asteroid came out of the side and clipped the side of the ship and knocked them off course and they've landed in the outback Australia. And they've woken up after the crash and they're kind of coming out, they're a bit confused and they're looking around and they've never encountered humans before. So they're kind of observing how we do things and how we interact and they're in Australia. So they're seeing heaps of weird shit that the rest of the world's not going to do. So yeah. they're trying to sort of assimilate with Australians. They're trying to disguise themselves to look like humans. They can blend in. They don't get killed off until they can figure out a way to mend their ship and get off and get, you know, back on their right. journey. So we created this whole storyline around it and we've created um, 8,500 generative art pieces. So what that means is Al, our guy, artist over in uh, the UK, he hand draws everything. So he designs like the base Martian. Yep. And then he hand draws every single trait. And a trait would be like a jumper, a shirt, or a headband, whatever it is, you know, a necklace, watch, whatever. He hand draws all of these and then puts all of those into a generator so that they get randomly assigned. And then that is how the 8,500. So we don't know what's going to come out yeah. and neither do you. So when you yeah, come yeah. to minting, the price is sort of the same across the board. You've got whitelist, which is like the, the pre-sale essentially. And then you've got like a public minting is what it's called when it's dropped. So the price stays the same for everyone so that you don't have ones that are super rare that, you know, Chris comes in and he's got $10 million can come in and buy all the super rare ones and hold all of them. Yeah. You know, so all of the traits get assigned a, a rarity of how many roughly percentage wise are going to be thrown out. So if we decide that a gold tooth is going to be 0.00001%, it might spit out one with a gold tooth, which mm. means that that one is super rare. Yeah. But a blue Henley shirt, could be on 70% of them. Yeah. So if it's got that, that Henley shirt doesn't make it that rare. So you've got a rarity, which sort of goes with the value of them as well. And those rarities then unlock different levels. Yeah. But they're all the the same price because you don't know what you're going to get. It's just going to generate it out and you might hit the lottery of it. Yeah. Yeah. You look at things like uh, the Board Ape Yacht Club is one of the biggest ones, the most famous ones within the space. Some of those are selling. I think they sold one for like 2,500 Ethereum. Uh, and one Ethereum, I think yesterday was worth forty four hundred Australian dollars. Jesus, like, so you could that was like a super rare one. So potentially, depending on how well the project goes and how much interest comes into it, it could be worth millions. Yeah, you know, or you could get a normal one that's it's worth you know a couple of grand. Couple so of how how much is your what like the baseline NFT that you guys are selling? So the public sale would be a point one one of an Ethereum. Yeah. So what, what's that? Oh. <laughs> you don't, don't know what's yeah. wrong with the math, man. No, 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 roughly. Yeah, yeah. Did you know? Uh, like, it's what? about four hundred bucks. It yeah. depends because it, it all depends. We set the price in Ethereum, so whatever that price equates to in Australian dollars yeah. is whatever the price of Ethereum is at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. So, have you had people adopting earlier? I mean, it sounds like. A great concept. I like yeah. the way that you guys have done it with the storyline and yeah, everything. It yeah. makes it more appealing to me. Yeah. Um, what you guys have done with it. Like yeah. automatically straight away, I'm like, yeah, I'm on board with that. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Like it's it seems like a great concept. Like to yeah. put rather than just have a picture and yeah. you know, everything else attached yeah. to it. Yeah. That's sort of that's sort of what we wanted to wanted to do, not just a narrative, but like we've got the ability for because what we want to do is we're gonna create an actual community and like every NFT project says that they all, they're all, oh, we're a community based, community driven. Yeah. But at the end of the day, they're all about profits at the end of the day. Our idea is that we feed, like we, we obviously do want to make money as founders. We want to be able to, you know, make enough money to not have to work in a jail anymore. Like yeah. I fucking hate that job. So yeah. if I can get out of that and work film full time, that's great. And this might allow us to do that monetarily, but we want to feed those profits back in. So we're creating what's called a, we've got like our own token, Pineapples, uh, which is a, a bit of a spin-off term from uh, from the from our army days. John is also ex-military, he's yeah. a, a British uh, soldier. You remember Little Nicky? Film Little Nicky? Yeah, Adam Sandler. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How Hitler was copping pineapples? 
I don't really remember it that well. It's not my favorite he was, he, uh, Adam Sandler yeah. one, but I do I remember yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Hitler's punishment in hell is copping pineapples off the butt because super uncomfortable. Yeah. So it was sort of it's a terminology that's thrown around, uh, definitely in the Australian military, not so much in the Brits. But like when you get a shit task, you're just like, man, we just copping pineapples. Like this is horrible. <laughs> this sucks. So it was a bit of a throwback to that. Yeah, so we've yeah, got a. Okay. a um, a native token in our ecosystem that people will be able to stake their NFT. So if you buy one of ours, you'll be able to essentially move it from your wallet into a vault. You still have complete control over it. You can pull it out whenever you want. But by putting it in that vault, it stops you from selling it. So as a reward for not selling it, you get rewarded in pineapples yeah. per day or per so hour. So it's like interest kind yeah, of thing. Essentially. Yeah, essentially. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. you're at... Overall, that A, the lesser available, helps the floor price rise, okay. which helps everyone in the community yeah. be able to sell so for higher if they do. your back as well as other people, yeah. yeah. Yep. So it works for everyone. So you'll get reward in those pineapples. So what are the pineapples for then? Uh, that's the beautiful thing. So you can use the pineapples within the ecosystem. So we will have like a merch line coming out with you know, hats and shirts and whatever, and you can yeah. purchase them with that. We've got future drops planned of more pitches and NFTs to come out, which will have other benefits attached, which I'm not going to get into because yeah. that would be giving away too much, yeah. but you'll be able to put those pineapples towards purchasing those later to save you actually spending real money. Um, the pineapples also can be used within a, uh, within a fund. The amount of, so there's like a finite amount of pineapples. Yeah. With the finite amount of pineapples, the more money goes into this fund means that each pineapple is worth a certain percentage of that fund, the more money goes in, the more the pineapples are worth. So at a certain point, you'll be able to sell them back to us essentially and withdraw that into your actual funds and you okay. can use that if you want. Yeah. Convert it into Ethereum, back into Australian dollars in your bank account if you want. So we're also creating a play-to-earn game. So it'll be a game which we're going to look at putting into an app as well, like on your phone. Yeah. But you'll be able to jump on and actually play like a video game essentially and earn pineapples for playing. And then you'll be able to do the same thing. Yeah. yeah. And will that have the character, your character, will you be playing as your character? Yeah, your NFT? Yeah. We'll, yeah. yeah, we'll be looking into how we can work that in. Yeah, adapt that in. Yeah. 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 We're also looking at moving uh, with some of the profits, we're moving into the metaverse, purchasing our own um, space with the metaverse and setting up a essentially a spaceship, which would be like our clubhouse that people can come and like we were saying earlier, virtually yeah. hang out with each other, you know, catch up whatever with their avatars but one of the things we're going to do is going to bring the first comedy shows like virtual comedy shows so we're going to try and get onto we've got a few connections that we're working at the moment on some australian comedians to start but try like the bigger we get the better you know yeah. the, the more money we'll be able to pay like ideally i mean if we can get kevin hart involved that'd be amazing yeah you know what i mean yeah, like, yeah. that's sort of what we're looking so that people can come and they can do a virtual comedy show and people can come and get access just by owning one so they don't have to go and pay for tickets. They, they've they bought one, they own it, and come in essentially just have a free comedy show from one of the best comedians in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty wicked, man. Yeah, yeah. it sounds like you're really creating a world around it and that's yeah. the idea behind yeah. it now that you've educated me. I understand yeah. it a lot more, yeah. yeah. And then we've got other plans that we'd like to to do further down the track yeah. and see how far how far we can take it. Because at the end of the day, man, it's it's a space that's... It, it's unknown territory. It's the like unknown, yeah. The sky's the limit. What your imagination is as far as you can get it. Yeah. You know, if the technology's not there to do it now, it probably will be in the next five years, 10 yeah. years. You know, you can start working towards it now. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's like you're you're doing it for the people that are hanging out in yeah. these digital rooms, right? Yeah, and man, these digital sure. things. Yeah. yeah. So how I mean, like how often would people be like because clearly that community and everything is kind mm. of the selling point as well yeah. as like the cloud of having certain NFT that's rare or whatever. Yeah, yeah. That seems to be the selling point, right? Yeah. And so what you, I mean, you guys sound like you've really thought that through of mm. what you're involving and creating that whole world. So it's all yeah. overlapping within it and it's all, yeah, you know, yeah. boosting the price of the NFT or the cryptocurrency yeah. or whatever you're using and hopefully coming return for you guys yeah. with the work you're putting in. Yeah. Because it sounds like you must be putting in a bit of work to oh, be man. setting this all up. And yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, this 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 week uh, and last week have been a little bit less work on that project for me because being on uh, on Nautilus, I've been flat out. I haven't had a chance. So John's been taking the brunt of it, and yeah. uh, and Harry and and Reedy have been taking a lot of a lot of the strain there, just because I'm, I'm not 
around to do it. But previous to that, man, yeah, as a period of about three weeks, I ran on basically 16 hour days back to back for yeah. seven days a week. Like there was a few days, like one week I, I mapped together about 18 hours of sleep between like Sunday morning and I think it was like Saturday night. Jesus. That, yeah. It was go to sleep at like two or three in the morning up at five and back on the laptop. Like I was in um, isolation for COVID. So oh, okay, yeah. I, I could do it, but it was, oh, man, it was hard. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I mean, what's your expertise in that area then? Like, obviously you got the guy that's the artist and everything mm-hmm. like that. So what, what's, are you just doing ground, a lot of the groundwork yeah. just to. Yeah. 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 So we've got our dev over in um, Texas, Jake. So he does like the coding to make sure that that's all done. Uh, me and John built the website. John, has taken over that because he's a man. That dude is like his brain. <laughs> it's ridiculous, man. Yeah. He just he sits down and he just picks shit up. That's for time a technological <sighs> Neanderthal. It's terrible. So I've done a lot of the narrative and a lot of basically me and John working together and bouncing ideas off each other yeah. and sort of overseeing how everything goes and putting things in place to get from point A to point B. So that's sort of where I've come in. And then obviously John is doing a lot more of the marketing because I'm you know, here, but this is part of marketing, John. Yeah. It's all about right. the marketing. We'll get, get some it out clips there. out there for you, John. <laughs> yeah. It'll all yeah. pay off. But yeah, just trying to like getting on, talking to people is, is sort of the main thing, educating people. It's mm. so like posting on Instagram or whatnot. Uh, it's over the last few weeks, the amount of people have, have seen it and then started to message me and they're like, hey man, the fuck is this? Like, what are you, what are you doing? What's going on? Yeah. And then be able to actually educate them and, and teach them you know, whether, whether it's our project or not, you know, forget about us. I mean, don't forget about us, <laughs> but forget about us. Like get involved in the space, man. It's, it's going to be the future. It's the way it's going. Like just do some research, look into projects, look into the space and see what you like. You know, I hope you like us, but at the end of the day, like we're not going to be everyone. Well, That's it sounds fine. good. Like for something that I wasn't remotely even really interested mm. in overly, I was curious more than yeah. anything. Now I'm like, kind of invested in your idea. Yeah. Like I, I like the sound of it. Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. it works. And um, it, it makes me more want to look into it and understand yeah. it and possibly get involved, you know, like yeah, it, that's, yeah. that's the thing. Like, cause before I was just like, I don't even know what the hell this is that yeah, everyone's man. doing. Like, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing because yeah. I got enough on my plate as it is. But yeah. yeah, I mean, it must be, it's like one of those collaborative things once again, though, like you clearly need it. Someone that's yeah. good at code and like yeah. all these other things, which, like mm. for someone wanting to create it, I'm sure there's businesses around though yeah. that you employ these guys yeah. to do it and you're like, I've got Fiber, this man. and this idea. People jump on Fiverr. Yeah, well, so that's someone. what I use to mm. do the sound engineer yeah. for the so podcast yeah. and same with logo design yeah. and a lot of things that I've used on there. Yeah. It can get a bit difficult when you're dealing with people that are of different languages and yeah. different um, ethnicities. Mm. Or well, not, you know, not taking yeah. it to a race, but um, no, just like, really, you know, they don't understand yeah. the communication yeah, barriers absolutely. there and it's just like, yeah. no, not this. And you're like getting images and you're circling like this spot and this and trying yeah. to direct them to like what you want to do but you get there's there a very eventually. talented people out there for sure amazing yeah, yeah for, for a decent price like um yeah yeah like i, I was getting this uh podcast like edited for like mm. 10 11 12 dollars yeah. at one point which is which was great yeah it's doubled now but yeah, yeah. um <laughs> because the guy's got good and he's done a lot but um yeah. yeah so it starts to get to the point where you're like oh yeah is that you know yeah, something yeah. that i can get better equipment and do myself or whatever yeah. but it's time Absolutely. consuming these guys are good at what they do and that's why you're paying them the mm-hmm. money to do it yeah yeah one of the other things that we are doing uh being that I mean, John, are both ex-military, is we're kind of big on mental health as well. Yeah. So we, we're we donating a chunk of money, whether they want it or not. We're going to donate to uh, the Black Dog Institute once it's sort of minted out, which is yeah. donate a large chunk of money to them. And then we're looking at trying to reach out to them and actually see if we can do some sort of partnership with them, Yeah. You know, which helps us with publicity and getting them and helps them with publicity, which then yeah. helps people who, you know, might, who might need be struggling. Help. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we want to sort of create a community even within our discord where people can come for a laugh and like, you know, talk shit and have some fun, but that they can actually feel safe enough to express themselves in whatever way they want, but feel safe enough to be able to be like, oh, man, I'm, I'm feeling shit. Mm-hmm. Like, is anyone keen for a chat for 10 minutes? And yeah. you can do that through discord. You can have audio chats. Like you yeah. can have sort of phone calls. Yeah. So we, we would really like to create somewhere where people can feel safe enough to reach out and, and have a chat. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. And so, yeah, because it's it's interesting because um, I know other people that have been in the military and mm. you, and 
it's just interesting to me that there seems to be a lot of ex-military guys and gals mm. that um, seem to be getting involved in the acting space too. Yeah, people but are. also, um, yeah, they're always attracted to that charity. Like they're always, yeah. like there's a lot of people that are here, like wanting to start charities and this and that. Um, what do you attribute a lot of that to? Um, I mean, I guess it's a, it's obviously um, like because maybe not all of them wanted to be actors and stuff yeah. like that, you know. But it seems to be. I mean, is it that they're looking for that cast type, you know, because a lot of films yeah. are, you know, as like extras. I know there's the, um, what's the one down on the coast uh, that has their uh, extra specialist agency oh, like yeah, that, that have like a lot yeah. of those specialist guys that are yeah. trained, like they've probably done, I think they do mm. a lot of stunts and stuff as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they seem to be like attributed to like being on film and they're doing large yeah. chunks of these films with that. And it's great to give them, yeah. I guess like you've got, you get a bit of a payout, don't you, when you come out from the military? Uh, I don't really sort, know. Sort of it's de- not really. Sort of depends, man. Yeah, a, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. It's a, it's a, it's a fucking painful process to yeah. get through, I'll tell you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I understand. And yeah. uh, well, to a certain extent, I have spoken to a few people about that, but we don't need to get totally yeah. into that thing. Yeah. Um, I but, just slag them off too much. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, but yeah, it's just interesting that there seems to be a lot of people involved in the in the filmmaking, mm-hmm. that, especially the acting and stuff with that. And yeah, mm-hmm. they're always passionate about wanting to do charities. I guess yeah. that comes with seeing the worst of some scenarios yeah. and being there, but wanting to be there for one another and other people, you know, yeah. knowing those struggles because they've had it so bad that you can understand and sympathize on a certain level. Yeah. I mean, what is it for you guys wanting to get involved in that? Uh, well, med- mental health is a big one for us. We, we both get our, our our own issues. Yeah. You know, so everybody's you, got demons, man. Yeah. 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 yeah you got to deal with those. I think uh, generally, I don't want to take away from anyone else because everyone's got their own issues, but I think generally, veterans come with a whole a whole host of of other ones on top yeah it's great great fun um but generally i think when when you are in the military you're in that life of service so whether whether you want to look at it that way or not or whether you know you believe that or not at the end of the day that is what you're there to do you are there to help people you are there to serve Mm. whether that is cleaning up after floods or you know humanitarian aid stuff like that or whether that's going over and putting a bullet in someone who's trying to hurt other people you know at the end of the day it's still in some way serving so i think when we get out you know you come back and the world is very very it's greed it's greedy at the end of the day, everything's everyone's out for themselves for the most part. You know, corporations don't give a fuck about you. They're just there to make money. And we miss that service of actually having a purpose, I think is, is probably the better way of saying it. Being in that role of service, you have a higher purpose and you feel like you're actually needed. So I think that translates across if you get into something, especially if you can get into something like NFTs where the potential to make a lot of money is there, you want to give it back. Yeah. To a degree. I mean, you don't want to give all back because obviously everyone still wants to get ahead. I'd, I'd love to own a house and drive a nice car, you know, and, and not have to worry about working. Yeah. But I also want to help other people out. Yeah. You know, like I want to help my parents out. They've been grinding it for fucking yeah, 60 years. So much, you know? right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They've, they've given everything for us to have what we've got. Mm. You know, anything, even if the smallest thing you give back to them or any other member of the community, like, yeah. How do we make that happen? Yeah. yeah. How, yeah, how yeah, can no, we do it? Agree, how can yeah. we use it? Yeah. It's sort of the same, I suppose, with uh, you look at actors with their Oscar speeches and whatnot. A lot of people are going to sit there and they're going to laugh and, you know, oh, this fuck, we're just talking about his bullshit. Huh? Yeah. But I think at, at the heart of it, they are, they're just generally, they recognize, I think a lot of them, that they're at a very, very fortunate, you know, being at that upper echelon and getting $40 million for a movie. Yeah. It's like the top 0.1%. You know, they realize that, yeah, man, I'm very, very lucky to be here. Yeah. And I want to do something to to make I suppose imposter syndrome to regress. You know, do I really deserve this? What can I do to sort of give something back so yeah. I at least feel like I've earned it? Earned, seems I've real for me. Yeah. 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 No, I understand that, man. Yeah. That's yeah. It's it's a good thing like that you guys yeah. are doing. Yeah, that's that's for sure. Like and and um mm. Yeah, it's great to be able to give back. That's just yeah. at the end of the day, uh, it's something that's so simple mm. um, for the yeah. greater good of humanity. Like yeah. if we were all a little bit nicer and a little oh, like smile to the odd person down yeah. the street, you just have no idea the struggles and the demons that they're yeah. going through because everybody true. really does have them. And I yeah. know for me, I got to train, you know, like mm. I was like, it's funny you said that yeah. about the post before, like I literally posted and I was in the gym. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was laughing. And I, don't, I don't do it. I'm grinding. I'm yeah. working out five, six days a week anyway yeah. and never really 
post yeah. any, you know, like I don't yeah, get yeah. the whole gym selfies every oh, five man. seconds. I'll do the odd one just to let yeah. everyone know what's up. But yeah, it's just yeah, like, just <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, oh, it's not even a play. Uh, yeah, it's funny. Yeah, it's just like, yeah. okay, I'm on my grind. This is how I'm yeah. starting my day. Then I got this. And then, you know, it's like, mm. Switch session in the morning, yeah. boom, doing a podcast now, creative. I get to converse mm. with an awesome individual like yourself and we get yeah. to have a chat, you know, and yeah, it's man. like, you guys can do that. Like, because there was a time when I wasn't doing that. I'm going out drinking and partying yeah. with my friends. And it's like, there's so much more to the whole involvement of it and you guys yeah. can go do it too. And that's really what I use social media yeah, for. for sure. I like to show people what I'm doing. So I hope it inspires them that they can do something the yeah. same. Because there was a time when I didn't think, I thought it was possible. I just didn't know how to do it, yeah. you know? And when you have a lot of people around you saying that, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that. Yeah. You start to, you know, you start yeah, to think to that it. that's the truth. Hmm. And you're like, well, why can't I do it? Yeah. Why can't I just go out there? I'm going to take a swing yeah. and whatever. If, if it didn't Worst work case, out, it didn't work out. Get some cool stories. Yeah, exactly. And that's yeah. life. Isn't that living at the yeah. end of the day? Absolutely. But even, like even that gym selfie, man, like it feels wank at the time. And there are definitely like influence and stuff. We were just doing it for self-gratification oh, mate, and like, glory. Yeah. But like yeah. if you put that out there and you get a friend who's a little bit unhealthy or whatever, it could be that the thing that, oh man, maybe I should, you know, yeah. get in that, and they be a little bit healthier. Or they yeah. are, and they ask you, you're like, yeah. oh, I had so had you. I'm like, man, I feel the mate. Like I gotta, I have to train because yeah. I've had this is the first time my my guys like he's mm. like, man, take a few, take Days this week off. off. Yeah. Like, and I was like, he's like, you know, you should really be having like a week off every three months, like with yeah, this yeah. program. And I'm like. You haven't told me this before, mm. Sasha. I'm, yeah. I'm looking at you, bro. <laughs> and he's just like, haven't I? And I'm like, no, you kind of skipped over that one. Yeah, but yeah. And I'm like, he's like, oh, well, take take this week off. Because I was so yeah. burnt out last week. Like, yeah. um, yeah, before we are doing the podcast stuff, like I went in for a session after mm. I'd worked all week, done a lot of overtime, then worked mm. on the Saturday the whole day as well. And I was struggling, pushing that gym yeah, session. Man. I was like, man, I am fading hard. And um, that's, you know, I had yeah. a conversation about it. And that's good because we have that discourse yeah, where yeah. we uh, talk about it, you know, and he changes things and say, he's really awesome and, yeah. uh, that, he's, that he's doing it for me. But um, actually, shout out to Sasha Dulich because yeah. he's been doing it for Based. me for, yeah, yeah. He's all, yeah. So it's like, um, uh, aesthetic body transformation, like look it up online because yeah, nice. it's all can base like online training. You can do it. Like he'll have oh, a Zoom yeah. meeting for you. He'll set out all your nutrition, your yeah, training, sick. run you through it all. The amount of things that um, like he's helped me with flexibility and different things mm. like niggles and stuff that were there and just like yeah. worked it out. I'm like, man, the knowledge is crazy. And I would have mm. just kept going. Like yeah, with yeah, it, you know, yeah. I just kept training. I just gone, yeah, this is pain. <laughs> this is working this. through it. Yeah. Maybe if I do it a few more oh, times, the, I'll the, stop. <laughs> the impingements, you know, yeah, the bonehead way of working out. Yeah. But it's like, you just yeah. got to keep go, go, go. Because yeah. if you stop, then you you know, it's one of those balance things. But man, I had like, this is the first time in two years, I think I've had more than two days off training. Eh? Oh, and I was dude. going a bit nuts. I, yeah. I got into day, what did I do? <laughs> three days. And then I had to go and train. I trained this morning. Yeah. I was yeah. just like, man, I need to go. It Like my demons but, are starting that's to play, right, you know? Though. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. It was enough. Like yeah. it was good. I and I felt good. But some intuition with it for sure. Yeah. 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 It's a, you find a line between it, but it's mm. just, um, yeah, like I personally need it. Otherwise I'm just going to get too in my head with things, you know? Yeah. And I just need that outlet and like push myself in the struggle. Like yeah, you were saying about before, if you don't know struggle, you don't mm. really know living, I think, like at yeah. the end of the day, because you're living in a in a box of cotton fluffies and you're never yeah. gonna get like any any hurt or anything. Or yeah, for sure. But then with that hurt comes growth. So yeah. it's just I think one that's, of those. Um that's one thing I don't think a lot of people who don't lift weights, like pick whatever exercise it is. I'm just gonna use weights because I like yeah. right, lifting weights. Yeah. Throw that on yeah, around. Yeah. Like I don't think they fully understand sort of the mental health benefits of the oh cheers, man of lifting weights. And I don't mean like just looking good, you know, like A, that's that's going to help with your confidence. You're going to feel better. Yeah. But B, like when you go in there and your program says 12 reps of you know, pec flies, whatever. Yeah. And it hurts like fuck and you get to eight mm. and you're like, man, I want to drop this weight. I don't want to do it anymore. Or I don't want to do another set. But you push through and you push through. And even if you don't get to that 12, you're going to get no. to that 10. Yeah. The fact that you go to a point where you're like, I don't want to do it anymore and you push through to do it, it's going to build your confidence. It's going to build your resilience. You're going to get physically stronger, physically healthier, but having to push through and struggle when you get to like things in life that suck, that you've got to struggle, you know, there's, there's definitely caveats where things are more than you handle and that's fine. Yeah. But generally the bar is going to get higher on what actually affects you. Yeah. That you're much. elevating yourself. Yeah. 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 You're pushing that threshold. You can handle more. And that's, you know, that's a positive use, yeah. dopamine hit yeah. as well, rather yep. than the gram stuff, you yeah. know, like it's that 
in your internally, like mm. it just has so much for you, like yeah. this harnessing that mm. and realizing it, that you can put that into everyday life and all the other things that you go through. It just, it makes yeah. life a little more manageable yeah, sometimes. For yeah, for sure. And you don't stress out. Like yeah. you, you, your heart rate is used to getting elevated. So when it elevates in a situation, you're not freaking out. You can handle it. Yeah, you can handle it better. Like yeah. I don't think that gets explained to a lot of people who aren't into that. They, they purely see it as a superficial thing yeah, and it yeah. just really isn't that. Yeah, no. like I know now once I've found like, mm. you know, the training and got consistent and got some results with it because you get that confidence, right? Yeah. It's um that's when like I'm just like, how have I not yeah. been doing more of this and I need to keep going with this. Yeah. And I don't think there'll be a, a day or a time that unless my body really gives out on me or, yeah. or anything that I won't be training, you know, like yeah. it, it's a part of my way of life. Like mm. it's not just a thing for aesthetics and, yeah. you know, and that sort of thing. It's just, it's something that I wholeheartedly believe in and just, I know it's been benefi- a beneficial for me yeah. for everyday life. And it just, Absolutely. It'll, it'll always be there and yeah. I'll just keep doing it, you know? Yeah, man. Grinding. It's, I said, little struggles, man. Yeah. The more little you struggles struggle, the little wins and mm. the big within big wins within yourself yeah, though, at the same time. For yeah. sure, man. And yet, so even important. if you don't realize it at the time, yeah. later on you're like, man, like look at the roll-on effect that that had when I did yeah. this thing and how much better was my day. Yeah. And those other things that you're a welcome into your life, like along yeah. the way, it's just, it's, it's a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Like if I even look at it like, you know, 30 coming on 32, I've got no kids, but like I look at like young dads and stuff and like, oh man, I just want to be, be able to run around with my kids. If that's what the motivation is for you to go to the gym and do stuff, like if it means you got to get up an extra hour early before going to work so that you've got enough energy to be able to run around with your kids, fucking do it, man. Yeah. Like I know it's going to suck. Because that means everything yeah. for the kids. Because so yeah. I, I remember when my old man, like, and that's why I look onto it and be so thankful mm. for now, like of what they sacrificed, you know. Yeah. It's like my old man doing a physical job like all day out in mm. the heat. And then we'll come home and I always want to kick the ball around. I yeah. always want to play cricket. Yeah. I always want to do this and that. And I remember so now I'm energy. like, man, I was harassing him all the time yeah, to go and do this. For say. Sure. And Kids it's like, and he'd go and do it, you know, and it'd be a few hours. I'd be like, I oh, really have to go in. And then I'll sit out yeah. there for another, you know, hour or two doing it myself. But yeah. it's just like, yeah, man, that grind, that hustle mm. way, it's just like, and they want to obviously feed into yeah. their kids, you know, and, and hope that it makes them better, mm. you know, in their way of life. And it's just, it's an awesome thing that, yeah. you know, it is to be a parent. I'm sure I don't yeah. know myself either. Mm. Almost basically the same age. Yeah. I'm 33. So. Oh, you so um, old. So yeah. old. Dan. Oh, mate, going on 34 <laughs> actually. <laughs> oh, good <laughs> yeah, Lord. I know it feels old <laughs> now. Like when I say it, I'm like, really am I that old? Oh, but it's just, just, hey, man, this is, this oh, is life. Cares, and this is the one we're living, you know, um, I still feel good. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I feel my body's wrecked, mate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, it's all the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. That hurt, though. Oh, but yeah. that struggle, once Everything again, hurts, it's beneficial. Hurts constantly. It's a constant pain. But that's right. Yeah. Slow you level. got certain things that are. Yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, wrecks my body. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah I can only imagine. Right. Like, because if you're in infantry, you've got to lug around yeah. like all the heavy equipment, right? And everything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I weighed, uh, weighed my gear overseas for, for a single day task. And I think from memory, it was about 47 kilos. Jesus. Yeah. And that was like, we're not going out overnight. We're going out for like eight hours. Like it's, yeah, it was heavy. Kit, kit is a lot getting lighter as technology yeah. improves and yep. stuff. Like stuff's not quite as heavy that, but the boys say they're still carrying around ridiculous weights, man. And it's just got to be wear and tear on your, on your soldiers, yeah. right? Yeah. And it's yeah, got to make sure. them less productive yeah. or efficient in mm. what they're trying to do and what you want them yeah. to be doing. Yeah. Well, I mean, you learn that grit though. Yeah. Like, well, it sucks. It sucks. And that's and kind of irreplaceable, right? It's like something you can't put. Yeah. Like, yeah Cause once again, that struggle, you find things about yourself and you push yeah. to that next level and create yeah. it. And, and like, you know, as a, as a unit, it yeah. pushes you further, right? It's better for the unit. Once oh, you see dude. someone doing it, you're like, I got to keep yeah. up with them. I Otherwise, remember. I'm going to be the bitch and I'm going to get shit <laughs> for it. I remember this uh, this Sarge I had, Lofty, George Loftus. He's a weapon. I remember him. He's got this big booming voice and we're doing a pack march and everyone was hurting. Like we're just stomping for like 20Ks or whatever. I was 15Ks probably. Carrying heavy gear and we're just doing It's just a PT thing. And he's just laughing because some of the boys are hurting. He's like, turns. You know what I do to get through the day, mate? I'm like, oh, <laughs> so lofty. So I come to do- to work every day with an empty pie tin, and throughout the day, I just take little slices of other people's morale pie. 
<laughs> and that feeds my soul. <laughs> I was like, what? You've been doing this too oh, long. Man, <laughs> he's a funny dude. Yeah. But yeah, like you do, you feed off it when you're, when you're in those environments. Yeah. And it just push you further. Yeah. 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 You see your mate hurt and you're like, oh, I'm not going to be that bitch. It's not going to be me. Nah. Yeah, nah that's good. Because you know shit. you're going to be the one getting yeah. shit later yeah. and you're like going to have to fend it off from all. Yeah. Like, 100%. Yeah. The banter, mate, you're never going to get better as savage yeah. as the military for well, see, sure. I, and I think that's what can be lost in this day and age too and yeah. I remember what like I used to kind of hate it but I did it at the same time mm. when you have your core group of friends and you just yeah. take the shit out of oh. for, out of each other but it got you to be so snappy yeah. with your comebacks Quick and winning. everything and you're yeah, like yeah. man I'll body you bro if you want to go there <laughs> like if it's people like at work and stuff like that they're like it's so good it's like I just sit and I'm like yeah you came to play Yeah, don't like it if you can't handle the heat man like you know yeah that's it let's it teaches you to be just so yeah. snappy with it, eh? Yeah. And, and you see the difference of people that didn't have that yeah. as well. But it, it also, bit, like, it builds up when you haven't got anything and you just get hit and you just, everyone knows it. Yeah, like, you're just like, I'm going to wear these. Like, yeah. yeah, you just yeah. cop it and you have a laugh. But it, yeah. it builds... It builds it's a character. thicker skin. Yeah, yeah for yeah, sure. Yeah. Like, I think we've we definitely lost that in this day and age. People get offended so easily. Like, man, I know. I'm just kidding. I was it's just, and there's select individuals that you know. <sighs> like, I've got yeah. guys, even some of the young guys that have come through. Away, and you just like, mm. you know, like you blokes, you, you muck around. Like, yeah. we had the exchange over messaging. Yeah, yeah. We're, <laughs> you know, we're like, fucking, you know, being idiots. Straight on. And just like, you, you flirt with each other or whatever, yeah, yeah. just saying ridiculous shit. Oh. You know, it's funny and it's banter. Yeah. But as soon as like you did that, a couple of messages, yeah, I'm like, yeah. oh, yeah, this is going to be good. We'll be yeah. fine. We know drama. So, no. We, we we never met before. Yeah, we did yeah. it today. So it's yeah, good. and it's just free flowing conversation yeah. like that. And it's like you find the people like that, and it's just it makes the day so much better. Like yeah, it brings yeah. that quality, like in the environment that you may not be wanting yeah. to be in. Clearly, like some yeah. areas in the army, like and you just got to yeah do it for entertainment and just to keep morale up and just yeah. boost it all around you. It definitely, but, it definitely boosts your sense of humor. I think um, yeah. when life sucks and you've got no way out, like there is literally. It's not like being at the gym, you know, you get a little bit tired, you're not feeling like, oh, fuck, I was going home today. I like, couldn't be bothered. We've all done that. When you get put in those real shit situations and there is no way out, you literally just have to do it until it stops sucking. Yeah. Like you get to a point, you just laugh. Like you, you can't help it. And you just, you just laugh at shit. You know, yeah. this fucking sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, man, yeah. Just, it's just, it's, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's so it's good. Miserable. It just, Gets you through the tough times in life yeah. sometimes, yeah. That, the misery, that resilience, yeah. Oh, but misery builds like the best teams. When you when you have collective suffering, it builds. And it that's got to be why they do it, obviously, in the yeah. army and stuff like that, For right? Sure. To test you and see what you're made of, yeah. but it, it teaches you to survive as a unit, even if yeah. you hate that person next to you. Yeah. You find some sort of uh, common yeah. goal within the whole thing that you're yeah. trying to do because you're all in it together and you've mm. got to get through it. You can hate each other afterwards, yep. but let's just get the good old damn thing done. Yeah. Well, everyone, everyone hates collective punishment. Like, you know, if, if you fuck something up, yeah, I don't really want to cop it for you. Up. Yeah. But that collective punishment does a lot because you all suffer together. So it brings you closer, but it also teaches you to start looking out for each other because yeah. I don't want to have to do push ups. Because you didn't, you know, yeah, tie so you your pull, the right pull or whatever. On the side. Yeah. yeah, you're like, come on, man. Like, yeah, you know. what the fuck are you doing, man? Yeah. Like, shut the Sort it up. out. Let's yeah. just get this done. Like, yeah, it's good. It builds, there's a lot of positives come from military for sure. Yeah. As long as some negatives. <laughs> <laughs> Overall. Yeah. It's yeah. reduced the fine human being we have in front of us. So <laughs> I don't know about that, mate. I'm sure there's plenty of people that would uh, would disagree with that. Oh, uh, mate, fine. man, yeah, I'm sure you're doing the best you can do, you know, I'm with doing, what you've got I'm in front of you, man. And it sounds like you've got a lot of positive things happening and it's good. It's, yeah, I, I love, like, I appreciate you coming in here, having a chat, man, educating oh, me in the NFT space. Yeah. Like, now I have a little bit more of a handle on it. Yeah, I kind of want an Outback alien. Oh, dude, <laughs> mate, jump on the Outback Martian train. Yeah, Outback, Outback Martians. There we yeah, go. So tell, we, tell the people where they can find all that and uh, uh, your socials and so, everything. Outbackmartians.com uh, is our website. You can have a look on there. Most of the information will be on there. And we've got links to our socials on the website. But Outback Martians on Instagram, Twitter, uh, Discord. You'll have to join that through the website. Yeah. But yeah, like hit me up on Instagram, Facebook, whatever. I don't mind. I'll, I'll chat to anyone about it. I don't care. We'll let them know what your Instagram is and everything yeah, so they can yeah. find you. Uh, turns.style on Instagram. Uh, Facebook's just Jacob Turner. I think Jacob E. Turner on Twitter. I barely use Twitter. But uh, yeah, hit me up. If you want information, like I'm happy to chat to anyone yeah. about it. I don't mind. Yeah, happy I mean, to educate it's... people. Whether whether you're buying to ours or you're buying to something else, it's fine. I'm, just, I'm happy to just tell people about the space. It's it's good. It's, 
yeah. creating that higher consciousness yeah, all around. Yeah, yeah so for sure. So when um, is Canvas movie, is that getting some sort of release? Or? Yeah, so Canvas, uh, I believe, Chris has submitted it to the Girl Kiss Film Festival. So I believe it'll be yeah. coming out. Uh, oh, I so think was it Chris's like, film, was it? Chris Giddis, yeah. Oh, sorry. No, okay, no, not Bridgewater. Bridgewater. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. No. Uh, Chris Giddis. Bridgewater yeah. was the uh, the co lead. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I know Chris. Yeah, like yeah, I've done a couple of films with him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really I'm nice actually going to get him on the podcast. I spoke to him about oh, it a while ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We just haven't. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, he's a busy man. Yeah. He's so, busy um, man. yeah. Well, I haven't even asked, but he, he was keen as I asked him yeah. at one point, and he was like, "Yo, yeah, well, come on, man." Yeah, yeah man, for so, sure. Yeah, it'd be good to chat to him. And yeah, um, yeah, yeah. at uh, Goko's Film Festival. Um, you can also catch me on Channel 10 uh, Destination Dessert that's right we haven't even yeah. spoken about that that's <laughs> right we're clocked up two yeah. hours nearly so have we yeah I know good look dude this is time has flown I know I looked at it before and it was an hour and I felt like we only just started yeah. so yeah that's, good that's Lord. just that's what I love yeah. doing these things man when it just hits off like that you know yeah, yeah. that's great so yeah so yeah we'll tell people about your cha- travel uh, channel yeah so I, I co-host a, uh, a travel show for Channel 10 yeah. Destination Dessert we travel around Australia and check out uh well, cool dessert locations. It's sort of a, a sweet twist on it, but we're basically just checking out Australia and, and Australian owned and operated businesses and, yeah. and showing off Australia. That's awesome. It sounds yeah. like a good, good gig to get. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good, man. Yeah. Pretty good. It came sort of came out of nowhere, which was, yeah, starting out to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. I reckon I actually may have seen that up there yeah. at one point. Yeah. I, I didn't apply for it. I didn't see they it. Hit you yeah, yeah, yeah. I got asked and I, I literally had a free Saturday Arvo and was like, do you want to read for this? And I honestly, I didn't read into it. I just thought it was like maybe like a YouTube thing. I was yeah. like, yeah, whatever. I'm like, yeah. I got a free Saturday. I'm not doing any. Fuck it. So I put a tape in and then got hit up like two weeks later and like, hey man, uh, can you do you know, another tape for us? I was like, yeah, whatever. I did another one. And then got the call from Mad and she's like, hey man, yeah. So we couldn't say anything because of like confidentiality, but it's, a, it's actually a travel show on Channel 10. Like, I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. 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 So uh, yeah, we want you to come on and, and, so uh, I did a trial run in Cairns and Tassie uh, at the end of last year. Yeah. And just due to like the border closures, it was sort of with budget and everything, it was it was easier for Mads to just get her and, and buy the camera dude through borders and then just pick up like someone in Queensland, which is me and someone in the NT and yeah. per state. And they were all sort of trial runs to see who would be the best fit for like the ongoing yeah. uh, co-host. And, and you yeah, got and that. I, yeah, yeah, I ended up being the guy. So yeah, that's awesome, man. Yes, yeah, so we shoot season three. No firm dates, but I believe sort of late March, early April yeah. will kick off for a few weeks and yeah, it's work shoot it. that. Yeah. So who who's the Mads? Is that yeah, uh, Madison Claire Sloan? Okay. Yeah, I yeah. I feel like that name rings a bell, but I yeah, she's yeah. Sydney, Sydney based. Okay, yeah. Her and down there. Yeah. So she's done. Uh, I think she was uh, from what she was telling me, she was news presenting for Sky News for a while, and then she was doing a, a sports show. Yeah. For a bit, and then um, yeah, she kind of wanted to do this um, with COVID. Uh, I think she said they they took like a redundancy or something, and she put those funds into doing season one and like produced it herself. Oh, so she, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah that's made, cool. Yeah, she's amazing. She's yeah, so I, I love people work. that go about that and just yeah. do it all themselves. Though. She's such a hustler. Yeah, I mean, she's such a good egg. Like we have, I really get along with with her and Bart. And I think we've got a slightly bigger team yeah. for this season. But yeah, yeah cool. oh man, we have like it's. It's like three friends just cruising around. Like it's it's full of laughs. We it's, have a really good time. It's crazy. You get yeah. paid to do something like that, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, man. And that's, good that's the goal at the end of the yeah. day, right? Like yeah. If, if, yeah, if you can sort of get yeah. out of the normal nine to five and all oh, that stuff and then dude. and get into this and yeah. be paid for it. I mean, you're not mad at getting $40 million for a film yeah. role, but, but oh, man, man, pretty happy yes. camper when you yeah. can um, pay the bills and, and oh, you're doing dude. something that you enjoy. Like, yeah. I mean. I've never done presenting before either. So it was a it's a, a cool little. Yeah. Yeah. But it's fun because it's not. It's not scripted, you know. Like that's good. Yeah, she'll feed me a couple of questions to sort of ask, but yeah. other than that, it's just like, it's like just that's awesome. Free yeah, I like that because the, the only presenter I did a presenter gig once, um, mm. like paid one for like they were doing it for New Zealand schools, like fun run oh, yeah. uh, organization thing. Yeah, and I was yeah, like yeah. reading off a prompter, but that was oh, actually wow. they got me off star now and they hit me yeah. up for that as well. Yeah, yeah, Every and it just and happened then. to be Kiwi yeah. accent like for once it worked <laughs> out. And um, yeah, they they wanted me for that, and it's just like yeah. I'd never done it, eh? and it's like got, yeah, the the prompter and stuff. Yeah. So it was a bit scripted. I'd rather a free form sort of presenting yeah. gig or something along those lines. I think would be awesome actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, that that's cool, man. Yeah, man, it works well for once star now came through. Yeah, yeah it's so. pretty good. Like you. 
can get some get some yeah. stuff off there. Like I was talking about Anna uh, the other week, mm. and yeah, there's just there's some little gems on there that yeah. are really good. And especially if you're starting off in the game, it's a fantastic mm. thing oh, to have. As, yeah, as starting out, just getting the experience, yeah. man, it's second to none. And like, yeah. and you get like, yeah, there's a lot of uni films and stuff yeah. like that that are uh, posting on there. But you get the experience, and that's just invaluable. Like you can't yeah. beat. Like you can do stuff in front of camera as much as you want, but mm. actually getting there and doing the films like. You know, like, yeah. I mean, audition reads and, and classes yeah, yeah. and stuff are great. But when you get on set and actually do the damn thing and have the experience, yeah. like, it's a lot to go through, um, yeah. like, anything in life. And Let's, you learn a lot more from it hands-on, yeah. yeah. Well, something I, I didn't really think about when I started into acting and film was I didn't I didn't really know, like, where to start. I didn't factor in that nobody's going to hire you if you've got no experience. Yeah. I just kind of figured, you know, I just get an agent and do auditions and yeah. hopefully, you know, be the next Thor. I like, think that's what, what most mean? people think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Then you, then you realize you're like, Oh no, like you gotta really do some shit first. It's like, a grind. You know, yeah. 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 I think that's one of the things I really, I do love about it is the fact that it, it is a meritocracy at the end of the day, you know, I, on the higher end when it comes to the like, production companies, they are, they're all about the money. Mm. But when it comes down to the individual on set, every now and then you get someone who's probably not that good at the job, but for the like 95, 98% of the time, everyone there is there because they're fucking good at what they do and they're all coming together. It's, they're not there because they're someone's mate. They're there because they're fucking good at what they do yeah, yeah. and they're getting paid the money for it. And so everyone is professional. Everyone knows what's going on and everyone's working towards this collective goal. It's good. It's um, awesome. Yeah. I love it. It's awesome. All right. Thanks for coming on, brother. Yeah, man. Dude, I wish you all the best me, for everything. And Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. We'll Thanks for hear me. from you. No, Pop you're right, man. <laughs> yeah, no, come along some other time, eh? Like, yeah, man, absolutely. Now that you've warmed back. up to it, you know, Dude, we could blew two we hours, go a bit deeper. Two hours out of the water. <laughs> yeah. like, felt like nothing. That's it. Yeah, right, yeah. All right, man. Awesome. Peace All right, out. guys, it's us. We're out. See ya.